This is Thursday, March 8th, the Situate Planning Board hearing. Um, we have an agenda that's been posted. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, first on our agenda tonight is the continuation of the public hearing uh, for zoning map and zoning bylaw changes. Um, and uh, I won't read the whole uh, public notice here. This is a continuation of that public notice. We have two items that we're considering. Uh, zoning for Greenbush Driftway Area to amend the zoning map and zoning bylaw. Um, and the zoning for marijuana establishments to amend the zoning bylaw uh, for a <coughs> prohibition of marijuana establishments. Um, as I said, we've, we we uh, discussed this um, at our last. Let's see, when was that? February twenty second, I guess. Um, and we had two items on the agenda. Um, for completeness, I'll go through both items, although I think we're, we're pretty well um, in agreement on item number one, which is to amend the zoning map to change the boundaries of the bus business district and village business overlay district to include the highlighted areas as shown on the map entitled proposed expansion of the business district and village business uh, overlay district dated December 2017 issue a new zoning map reflecting this amendment and amend section 322 uh, reflect the new mapping. Um, we've, we had some extensive discussion on this last time. Um, first off, any, any additional input or comments from the board? Um, I will no. open it up to the public here if anybody has any comments on that particular item. Okay, good. Um, I think if, and I'll speak for the board, our, our, in our last discussion, I think we were in uh, uh, unanimous support of moving forward on this particular zoning bylaw change. So, Correct. Uh, perhaps we, uh, uh, perhaps we can vote this one and just get it out of the way. Well, I thought we were waiting. Oh, I guess that was the because we didn't want to close the public meeting. Right. We, okay. We're going to talk about the other one. Let's let's hold that, and we'll get. I think since everybody's here and we have kind of a short period of time, we'll try to get them both at the same time. Next item on the agenda is the uh, the zoning for marijuana establishments. Uh, the text of the current zoning bylaw, the current zoning map, and the complete text of the proposed amendments to the zoning bylaw and map showing the proposed changes to the zoning map are available for inspection. Um, the, uh, the project, the recommended uh, language, let me see if I've got it here. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Um, so what's proposed is to amend section 420 of the zoning bylaw by adding a new use category, GG, marijuana establishments, and to add a new section 492 prohibiting marijuana establishments. Um, and the new section, zoning bylaw section 9, uh, 492 is proposed, reads in accordance with Mass General Law chapter 94G section 3A2, all types of marijuana establishments as defined in Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 94G, Section 1, and as may otherwise be defined by Massachusetts law or regulation to include without limitation all marijuana cultivators, marijuana testing facilities, marijuana product manufacturers, marijuana retailers, on-site consumption of marijuana at a marijuana retailer location, and other types of licensed marijuana related businesses and the conducting of any such activity for commercial purposes by whichever name used shall be prohibited within the town of Situate. This prohibition shall not be construed to affect the medical use of marijuana as expressly authorized by the provisions of chapter 369 of the acts of 2012 and 105 CMR 725 as the same may be, be amended from time to time. So that's what's on the table. Um, we had a discussion about this last time, and uh, frankly, we, we uh, 
we left it open in order to get a lot more input than uh, I think most of us, at least on the board, um, got this proposal, but we hadn't really received kind of the, the, the background and rationale behind it, knowing that we have currently in place a uh, moratorium on the implementation of any of this, uh, which I think goes through November of this November year. November 30th, yes. Um, one question we did ask, and, and maybe if you've got an answer to it, was whether that moratorium can be extended. No. It cannot. It cannot. It cannot. Because? Uh, that's, what they've, that's what they've ruled. This is from the Attorney General? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I'd be, it would be great to get input on those who are proposing this. Um, and we're here. Great. <laughs> I brought them. Sorry. I figured that's why everybody was here. <laughs> Thought maybe we had samples. No. For the record, Mr. Chairman, Jim Boudreau, I'm the town administrator here in Situate. Um, and one of the things I was tasked to do when I got here was look at the marijuana bylaw, find out when the moratorium was, and then put something before the board to deal with the expiration of that moratorium. Uh, where Situate voted against question four, I think 55 or 56 percent against, and we have one of the most active anti-opioid coalitions in the state, uh, what I put before the Board of Selectmen was a prohibition on recreational marijuana facilities that you have before you. Uh, the board voted that five nothing and sent it up to you, and that's the genesis of why we're here. Uh, I'll turn it over to the people who are really smart and let, you, let them tell you why they think we yeah. should enact this prohibition. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Hi, uh, my name is Anne Marie Galvin, 81st Parish Road. I'm a resident and I'm also a town employee. I coordinate our federal grant here um, in Situate, the Situate Facts Coalition, which is a real um, honor to do in our community. It started as a grassroots effort about seven years ago. Then we applied for and received a very prestigious federal prevention grant. Um, and primarily, what I do is work with all the stakeholders in the town, so with the police, with the schools, with healthcare providers, with parents, with clergy leaders, all the different people, sectors in the community to work on evidence-based prevention strategies. So throughout this time period, marijuana has always been on the top of our list. Um, <coughs> so we don't discriminate, we work on all substances, but marijuana is absolutely one of the early substances of use still. Um, it's not opioids first, ever. And um, we continue to struggle um, with changing the whole community's perception, and particularly young people's perception about the harms from marijuana use. It's very harmful to use before age 25 at any level. Um, so we work closely with Social Hospital, who are seeing increased admissions um, for marijuana. The um, town of Situate Social Services Manager works with adults with major mental illnesses because of marijuana use among the young adult population. Um, and our schools, um, Jen Lopes in particular, asked me to share that she's seeing it younger and younger and more serious. So it's a persistent problem, um, certainly because the cultural norms and acceptance of marijuana use has changed so much over the last 20 years, which is all well and good. It's just not safe for kids. Um, so as far as the community's appetite for having uh, recreational retail marijuana in the community, they've said time and again, absolutely not. We've had lots of education and stakeholder training around it. And I've, anyway, I have a lot of information about the topic and I would love to, after everyone goes through, answer questions that you guys have. I really know about the trends and, and kind of the impacts at, to different demographics. So I'd be really happy to share that with you now or anytime. Um, Just so, to be clear on, yeah. on the proposal, mm -hmm. it's, it's recreational marijuana sort of in a public setting. It mm -hmm. doesn't have any effect on personal use. That's right. So the state and law is 21 plus. It has mm -hmm. been since last year. July 1st is when the stores come online. So we, mm -hmm. the state delayed those regulations and now they're, they're starting July 1st private businesses can apply for recreational mar marijuana store licenses and businesses. That's right. So we don't, the town of Situate has said, no, we don't want even statewide legalization, but that's a, that was a state ballot initiative. So it's legal 21 plus. And now the stores, um, will, there'll be additional stores. Right now across the state, there are 22 medical marijuana dispensaries. All of those will essentially flip to become stores where anyone who's 21 can go and buy marijuana and marijuana products, including really high concentrates of THC in pink lemonade and brownies and candies and chocolate covered blueberries um, that are really, really strong and potent. Um, they'll be highly regulated for 21 plus, um, but as the chief I'm sure will tell you, 
lots of those 21 plus people will be driving are all around everywhere in Massachusetts. So there's a big enforcement piece to this, which is part of my public health perspective. But really, the harms I see um, from addi an addiction standpoint and a mental health st standpoint are really concerning. Um, so the, the whole picture is concerning. Is that the case where all the medical marijuana facilities will be able to sell? I thought that was not the case. That is essentially That they the were <clears throat> being separate. No. They'll be, regu they'll be doubly regulated for a little while by TPH and the Cannabis Control Commission, and eventually it'll be taken over to be all the CCC, but effectively they flip. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and are yeah. the regulations now yeah. in place, the state regulations? July 1st, yeah, they just, they're about July to publish 1st. them. July 1st, yeah. So have you seen them? I've seen the draft regulations. I can share those with the board. Um, and we had an opportunity to give input. I did give input on behalf of Situate, um, and many people did. A lot of them were around advertising and signage. It's here. I mean, the reality is there will be marijuana stores. Um, they're, they're nearby already. Um, and some communities are absolutely zoning them in for the excise tax potential. Um, but Situate community members, and particularly because of our substance problems at all ages, we don't want more. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. My pleasure. Jen. <laughs> uh, I'm Jen Keefe. I'm the Director of Public Health, uh, representing the Board of Health here. Um, kind of dovetail with some of what Anne Marie was speaking to. Um, we see a pretty significant social service need in the town, um, hence the employment of our manager of social services, um, who deals um, with a lot of mental health issues, uh, works directly with Anne Marie and Situate Facts on some joint initiatives. And, you know, the concern from my perspective is that, you know, the, any financial gain that can be achieved by this will be far outweighed by the social service needs and the additional impacts, um, not only to children, but to adults and the mental health services that we would then have to try to provide. Mm -hmm. um, the mental health services already are, are not enough for what we need to do, you know, locally, statewide. And mm -hmm. I think adding this element will just simply increase that social service mm -hmm. need. Uh, the other thing that, that particularly concerns me are the edibles. Um, although they would not be permitted or inspected by me, um, I think it would be very easy to see um, the accidental blending of <laughs> marijuana edibles with identically looking non-marijuana edibles. Mm -hmm. So you've got the gummy bears and you've got all the brownies and all that great stuff that can be uh, misconstrued. You have little kids taking brownies to lunch, and are mm -hmm. they taking mom's brownies, or are they mm -hmm. taking um, their own brownies? Mm -hmm. um, so we have students at the high school already with, you know, they're illegally acquired, but they're legal THC-infused lemonades that they get from a legal-aged friend or family member, mm -hmm. and they bring them to school. <laughs> um, so we're dealing with it already. Mm -hmm. um, so I expect we'll be dealing with it mo more anyway, um, but having local access would just, you know, more access is more access. Right. Yeah. Right. I guess one of the other issues with those are the dosages. Mm -hmm. So you buy a THC infused candy bar, mm -hmm. one or two squares of that candy bar is a dose. Right. I don't a know serving. anybody yeah. who has the willpower to <laughs> open a candy bar, <laughs> eat two squares, and put it back. So they're seeing all <laughs> over the place people Teenager. eating the candy bars yeah, because it's right. a candy bar, mm -hmm. and they're overdosing on the edibles. Because mm -hmm. even if you eat one or two, it's not the same as inhaling it, so you don't get any feeling from it. So you wait, you take a couple more because you're not getting any impact. So it'll take 30 minutes, 45 minutes for that to actually get into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And then they overdose. And they're on the way to the emergency room, they're on the way to the mm -hmm. hospital. So the, the edibles are a huge, huge issue. So I didn't mean to jump in. No, please. It's true. Please. Yeah. The Last year I went to a chiefs, Mass Chiefs of Police meeting and we had a speaker from Vail, Colorado, the Chief of Police from the Vail, Colorado Police Department. And he started his speech by saying what was Massachusetts thinking. He had read the, the recreational marijuana law as proposed and voted on and he was just shaking his head. Far more lenient, way more susceptible to you know, abuse than what they had in Colorado, and Colorado was struggling. We hear all these stories, and some of them very legit stories to an extent, of kids with seizures and the things that marijuana can do to help them. Most of that help comes in the form of CBDs, not THC. There's a cannabinol 
ingredient in the marijuana plant that can help that. It's not tetrahydrocannabinol. It's not THC. THC is a psychoactive ingredient by which people get high. It's mind altering. This is not the marijuana, like they want you to believe, that was around in the 70s, that was 9%, maybe at, at the highest, 18% THC. Right now, this is medically, uh, chemically enhanced. And what they do is they turn around, they make waxes and dabs from it, right? It's 90 to 95% THC. The stuff that's going into some of these edibles is again, it's hot, it's hard to regulate. You eat more than what you're supposed to eat and you're gonna trip and you're gonna have a bad experience. We are experiencing that in situ right now. We have arrested people this past year stumbling on the wrong side of Front Street, drive, driving on the wrong side of Front Street, knocking down flower pots. Two flat tires and continuing to try to drive away from the cruiser, that's trying to stop it. Get them out of the car, no alcohol, none. It's all THC. Couldn't even stand up. Right? This is what's coming, and it's coming to, it, this was no kid. This was a guy in his 40s. So right now in Massachusetts, we have no good way to identify people who are impaired by the effects of THC. There's no breathalyzer for it. We have officers in situ who are trained in drug recognition, and they're working towards you know, being able to testify in court to the effects of THC on a person as it relates to impairment while operating the vehicle. We're not there yet. And we are farther along than most every other town and city in the state right now. And so so could I, uh, I'm just trying to be clear here. Um, the primary rationale is trying to keep it, uh, keep access out of the hands of the younger people who are more susceptible to impacts from it. Much like it's, alcohol, it's, we want well, alcohol is much more kids. addictive than, than marijuana. Well, don't think okay. for a minute that this but, is a kid's problem. It's well, what well I'm saying, beyond that. Well, what I'm saying though is that the primary impact is really with kids who are less than 25 years old, essentially. That's where the major impact well, are. If you were in front and of what that 45-year-old guy driving down the road. I'm just trying to be clear, road. right? I'm just I'm trying, trying to be clear. Question, yeah. um, what we're trying to accomplish here is, is managing the accessibility. We have no ability to manage the use of it privately mm -hmm. or individually, right? And people are going to do what they're going to do wow. in that regard. And that's not what we're proposing here tonight. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? I just want to be clear. We're not proposing a, a ban on the use of marijuana no, individually. Just it's it's public use. It's public access. It's not public use. It's just stores, retail stores. We're trying to ban the it. access. <clears throat> so, like a bar. Yeah. Well, I guess not like quite a, like a, a store. store or yeah, a liquor store, store more yeah, like that's it. what you're trying to do. That's what we right. want. To, we would like to. The right. Citizens of Situ have spoken and said we don't want that in our community. Not now. I think that possibly someday when we see how these regulations actually play out, um, but just with, just like with prescription opioids and with highly regulated alcohol industry, which was my family's industry, um, it just because there's a law and there are licenses doesn't mean that people um, aren't going to have access to it that that shouldn't, right? So for, I do think that we continue to work at the big picture perspective of prevention of harms for all ages, not just those under 21. Um, that's that's what we do. Um, if we can prevent people from starting early, we can prevent lots of progression of the disease of addiction and all the harms that come to families and communities because of that. Um, so we do work on all that. We don't legislate all of that, but we work on that from a public health, very comprehensive approach. That's a really long speech of mine. Uh, but what we know we can do by reducing outlets of any type like we do with prescriptions now, like we do with alcohol licenses, um, working on better by um, licensing practices for even our alcohol sales in situ. We're working on that. We want to do that for marijuana too, and we can pre be. We have the municipalities have the opportunity right now to be preemptive. It's very early. It's a very new industry. Frankly, even what we've learned from out west and states that have recreational marijuana from from many years, the the data, the science is actually kind of mixed. There's many more car accidents. There are more ER hospitalizations for sure at all ages. There's little kids that eat the gummy bears by accident for sure. Um, but the big picture 
um, cost benefit mm -hmm. thing, we don't know yet. So we're saying let's wait, sit to it, because once it's in, it's not going to go away. Um, let's ban it out of our community at this time and see how it plays out in Massachusetts. We can always um, zone businesses back in. Um, but we, we're saying for all ages and for the many harms that come, including from adult use, we can't handle it. <laughs> we, you know, the cup runneth over with our substance problems. Um, and that's very sincere. Um, and I can, you know, share data on all of that, but it's, it's, it's hard. <laughs> um, and like Chief Stewart was saying, there is no, there is no scientific test. When I think about driving and walking down the street with other people driving, uh, it's pretty frightening what's going on already. Um, and if there was a store where you could get them more easily, there'll be more of that on all of our streets. So no thank you um, to that. There's no roadside test. There's no blood test because marijuana stays in your system for weeks. Even if you smoked or ingested three weeks ago, a blood test would show you still had marijuana in your system. Also, people's tolerance for marijuana is very different. Um, so there's no, there's actually no scientific test right now. So there's no way to really charge people for driving high. <laughs> the blood test showing yeah. marijuana in your system isn't going to convict somebody of killing somebody driving under the influence yeah. of because there's no benchmark for what the for THC point, was blah, blah, blah. at the point of the accident, the time of the accident, and what exactly is the benchmark for impairment by THC. Yeah. Alcohol, we have we have numbers to put to that, 0.08s, 0.05s. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We don't have that with THC. Mm -hmm. What I would like to see is until the town and the state gets a better grip on us, that we don't allow these establishments mm -hmm. in situ. It's still available to the towns that want to allow it. Yep. It's still available to the people in situ. Mm -hmm. They have to drive to Hanover to a Macy's. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. If they yeah. want to one of them drive to Hanover to a store. No, they can grow it individually too. That's right, already. Right. Yep. Six okay, um, yeah. this has been really helpful. Oh, good. I appreciate you all coming, but I also want to make sure since we have an audience here to see if there's anybody else who has any comments. Questions for us? Uh, you, you can, can stay, stay right there, there if, you, okay. if you wouldn't mind, just yeah, in no. case yes. other questions come up. <laughs> <laughs> any questions? Any, any questions or comments? Wow. Okay. Would I, can I share my email? Um, I have so much more to say, but I would like, if this is this recorded, this meeting? Yes. So I'll just share my contact information in case people have questions after this meeting. Really love to hear from all sides because there are many sides to this topic. Um, so it is a galvin g a l v i n at situatema.gov, and I'll share the um, regulations with you guys through Nancy. Um, likewise, if there's other questions, I'm really happy to, to partner with you guys on. on and what is the what is the sort of going forward plan? Let's assume that this does get banned and all this. Is, yeah. is there still sort of uh, uh, people evaluating this going forward? Or so actually, there's a that? pretty robust um, commission that was established similar to the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission. Um, it's called the Cannabis Control Commission, and it's led by um, former State Senator Jen Flanagan. And it's very um, at the state level. At the state level. And they're doing a really great job, in my opinion. It's a it's a hard thing, you know. The the um, like um, the chief meeting alluded to the original ballot initiative was written by the industry basically, and so the state commission was established once the once the ballot came through. Yes, for Massachusetts, and it's really balanced. Um, it, it is led. The chairperson is an industry person. It's a pro marijuana. Um, legalization person, so I feel like it's it's well done. Um, we're good at regulations in Massachusetts, but it's but we're going to have to see how it plays out. I think it's it's confusing for sure. Um, I think people even in the industry are still confused about medical, recreational, and and all that stuff. So it, it's hard. I think it will take a long time for police departments and and things like that to catch up with what what it's going to be like. Um, so I, I look to them as really good leaders. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Um, any other? Comments? Uh, you can stay there if you want. <laughs> I know you keep wanting to move. <laughs> well, I think, if I may, uh, what this board, we're looking at, as you said, accessibility. Mm -hmm. We're not evaluating whether it's good or bad. Right, That's right. not our purvey. We're right. just saying, as you said, you know, is there an economic impact to situate that we might be gained by right. having these right. establishments? Yeah. And we're weighing that against, as you said, the accessibility, which then may make it more easy to get. Right. And as you said, I did not, I was not aware of the medical marijuana being available mm -hmm. um, to retail because mm -hmm. there is a, in, right in Hanover, right off of 123. Oh, yeah. Brockton, uh, Plymouth. Yeah. So it's, we're Paul's talking coming. four miles away. Yeah. It's not, it reminds me of back in the 1920s yeah. when a lot of towns banned alcohol. Right. There were dry towns and then eventually they kind Wet of all towns. went away. Right. Yeah. 
so but we're at that very beginning, beginning. stage and mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that that's what we're sort of evaluating is right. that accessibility I right think. and it's three percent it's a three percent excise to the town is the the upside that money and that could be substantial um but i don't think it's that our residents can get it so i'm not worried about that they're getting it plenty already and there'll be more but would situ lose out on that three percent for mm -hmm. a little while so, yes but i think that three percent would not cover so my question yeah. um you know and i yeah. i all of your comments are very valid yeah. and very understandable yeah. about more resources and more health impacts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I look at it and say, can't I just drive to Hanover? Like, mm -hmm. is it really going to be, uh, I mean, actually Hanover was, that section at one point was actually part of Situate many right. years ago. Right. So, I mean, it's the size of a town. Right. Uh, is it going to matter, right. you think, in your, in your estimation, whether it's in Hanover or whether it's in Situate? That's what I, we're trying to decide. I think, well, I think it buys us some time to see how this plays out. Um, I think the state could rein in, you know, change regulations, fund prevention, fund interventions, and community policing strategies. Like, I think it's going to be ugly for a couple of years, would be my prediction. And then we'll kind of, I think, they, I think eventually, my personal opinion is that ultimately it will be like liquor stores, and we'll probably have one. Well, let's hope it's not as bad as liquor stores. Right. <laughs> But that's what I mean, like we didn't do a super duper job, of that. you know what I mean? So, so when you think about, I think philosophically what you're thinking about, um, zoning and planning and what you want, how many of what you want in your community is, this is, this is our opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, because um, it's hard to undo it, like I mentioned, and I think we have too many liquor stores, I think, you know, and I think if you look at um, public health impacts and you look at density of stores like that, it's not a it's not a pro for a community ever. Um, so it's a it is a harmful substance at all age levels um, because of some of the impacts. Doesn't mean it can't be used responsibly, possibly for some medical uses that are yet to be all played out. But how many you have and if you have them affects you know the community that they're open in. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I do think it matters Hanover versus Situate. I do. I think we're lucky to have the. Yeah. Thank you. And, My pleasure. Um, yeah. Just I'm recognizing we've got yeah. another crowd yeah. coming in, but I, I want to try to bring this to closure. Thank you. More. So, any other comments? From I'll just say that while I fully respect like the public health concerns, mm -hmm. so, impact on social services, mm -hmm. as written, I find that the bylaw is a little bit overly stringent from a zoning perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I guess I don't understand how if we ban all retail locations of the that's where marijuana is probably sold and available mm -hmm. um, that would preclude a testing laboratory or a cultivation center which might very well be like an indoor warehouse that mm -hmm. you know has very limited signage or something it's kind of uh, security restricted mm -hmm. how that would I guess make marijuana more available if we have a retail a ban on retail establishments or smoking mm -hmm. establishments, mm -hmm. whatever. That's that's from a zoning perspective. I have a hard time right. reconciling that. So like a manufacturing piece, like a commercial piece. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That. That's different. I mean, I don't know if there's well, a place to do that in situation. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's included in the prohibition. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So you, you could well, any. Uh, and, unless any that was like cultivation that. for medical only. Mm -hmm. No, right? no, medicals, no. medicals, no, in, medicals yeah. separate. Possession, use, and cultivation. That's, uh, so, I think that's what's proposed here. It would, other than medical marijuana. Well, but, well, that's where I was saying is that <clears throat> could you have a facility that only grows for medical marijuana, as an example? That's what I thought you, we still could. Yes, we still we allow that in yeah, the zoning. We do. Yeah, we yeah. allow that Medical in the grow. zoning. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Well, that's where I think it's confusing. Mm -hmm. Is that believe me, the whole thing's confusing. <laughs> what what is allowed and what isn't allowed? Right. So this is only recreational marijuana. This has nothing to do with medical marijuana. We we allow medical. We allow medical right. marijuana. And, right. This is this is just this adult use. But, but right. I guess Ben's comment was the cultivation and I said oh but that would be only for recreational and then you just said no so that's no, where I'm confused mm -hmm. no I said I said that recreational cultivation is part of the ban that's, that's right that's correct, that's correct. Yeah. okay so that's, 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 that's yeah. clarification yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
I can't imagine any business coming. growing for one and not the other after July 1st. I know. I mean, well, so. And I even yeah. have a hard time to yeah. believe that, that someone <clears throat> would want to be in situ because, as we know, it's at the end of the road, right. it's near the ocean, it's right. not exactly the, the biggest commercial center, right. but, but still. But still, yeah. Well, I have to agree with the gentleman on the board, which is, from a zoning point of view, I find this very stringent. Mm -hmm. And philosophically, we can't allow that to cloud our minds, and I understand exactly where you're coming from. I, I understand all the pros and cons and have seen those establishments, but um, I don't know that we really want to wait and see what happens all the time. I mean, we could always be first and set the mark and, and, and try to put it that way for us as well. I know that alcohol has been a problem. Um, if not as much as marijuana and opioids, uh, alcohol Absolutely. is a huge problem in this town, so you know, you can't be in one and preclude right. another. I mean, that's one of those It's not issues. the night before we zoned in alcohol. I know. It's the night we have the opportunity yep. to zone out something yep. that harms our residents. Now, I just think that's that, the difference. Yeah, and I do think the zoning bylaw is, is a little stringent in yeah. that in that point because the cultivation, I, I think, is is separate from well, use. And I, I guess what I think this comes down in my mind to are we going to be preempt, preemptive yep. and and take it slow, or are we going to be a little more liberal on this side? And I would have to say, myself, I would fall more on the preemptive side, at, at least at this point, and more um, worried about accessibility um, for the younger age. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, once you get past a particular age, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be available to right. people, and, and we have to regulate it properly, just mm -hmm. like we should regulate alcohol and tobacco, right? And right. by the way, which are much more addictive and much more heavily <laughs> used yeah. across the United States mm -hmm. than marijuana. It's changing. And, and, it's I, don't, changing, and yeah. I think the predictions are that it, that it still would be that mm -hmm. way. Um, but from the perspective of, of sort of managing, um, managing our, our sort of foray into mm -hmm. this, um, you know, I think you've convinced me that, the, that a, a preemptive approach would be a good place to start mm -hmm. with the with the knowledge that we could come back and remove this ban, mm -hmm. and actually that's mm -hmm. why we were asking about the uh, the uh, moratorium mm -hmm. as to whether we could extend that and just keep that sort of rolling right. while other people had an opportunity to sort of figure things out. Right. Uh, but that's sort of where I've fallen out of it. And mm -hmm. well, and I think just so everyone's clear that we're just making a recommendation mm -hmm. right now to town meeting mm -hmm. or to the the board mm -hmm. i mean it's going to be voted on at town meeting mm -hmm. um, so we're not approving or not right. a disapproving right. anything it's tonight a recommendation, but we are at that point where we need to make well i'd like just like to let not. make one statement that you know if while the ban might seem prohibitive if you don't have this ban and you have your temporary moratorium in between the time the temporary moratorium mm -hmm. ends and the time you enact any other type of zoning shops could go anywhere so you do not have any you wouldn't have any control on no, I, I on where you where you, you want to place the them extended yeah. not whether no, right you know, I, right yeah. and, and i think the, the simple answer we've heard is no it can't yeah. be extended so we need to do something right so yeah. um, I, I think we're good here. well i think based on you know the board of health the chief of police you know i'm convinced <clears throat> that you know to be as you said a little bit more proof uh, preemptive I would recommend <clears throat> the the um, the zoning change you know as is although I think eventually as you said it's going to be everywhere but but you know if this is what the town desires and, and as you said we did vote as a town 56 percent is that right 54, 54. 54. so it's sort and of in, the zoning the um, temporary moratorium it was all in favor there was yeah. not well, that was kind of a, a fairly yeah. easy, easy. no-brainer. <laughs> I mean, you could almost view yeah. this vote as an extension of the moratorium. I think, right. Steve, that's where you were going with this. I mean, you have a, an opportunity every year to reevaluate the zoning, and this is not a, a forever thing. That's I mean, right. this can be reevaluated. So this year, because again, as Karen just said, if you don't pass this bylaw and when the moratorium ends, we really have no controls, no zoning controls over there as it stands now. It would have to be either at fall town meeting or the following spring town meeting, get something together to regulate these establishments. Mm -hmm. But between that time, we'd have nothing. You'd have local, you need a permit. So there's business. Yeah, but no zoning, right. no zoning right. bylaws right. that would regulate this. So um, given that it's getting pretty late here. Uh, well, 
I would be in favor of recommending both zoning articles as written. That's my take. <clears throat> Although I'm not 100 percent happy, but that's what I would go for. Uh, is that a motion? Well, no, I'm just telling you, I don't think we have to vote on anything, do we? We're just. No, I'd like to make sure we do. Yes, okay. yeah. So it's been moved. Well, what? I said that's my, my um, where I'm standing. Okay. But I don't know. I want to hear what from Ben and Patricia. Um, I'm, I mean, if, it's a, if we're, or we're going to vote both at the same, is that the way it proceeds? Oh, we can do one and do the other. Um, I, I still am going to, I still feel the. Prohibition is a little overly strange, and I wish you would have kind of got the wording for the bylaws and been able to discuss it before it came to uh, fell in our laps. Yeah, that's good. That's my opinion. So, well, let's take each one um, individually. How about the uh, article? I don't know what article number this is? But the article to extend the village business district and village business overlay district. I would highly recommend. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, how about the article to to support the prohibition on marijuana establishments? Based on <clears throat> the the chief of police and the board of health's recommendations, I would um, be on it, or I would be in favor of supporting the uh, article. Yeah. Second on that. I will second it if nobody else will. <laughs> All those in favor of supporting the ban? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's two to two. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. And can we need to actually write this report up? Yeah, because you have to actually give this report at town meeting. So I will I will I'll, I'll tweak the wording based on tonight's discussion. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> By the way, you asked way too many questions. Looks like there's one extra for you guys. Oh, yeah. I was reading the comments like that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that way you basically just get <laughs> Good evening. Sorry, uh, we're a little bit late, <coughs> but we did make it. Um, this is the continued public hearing for the residential cluster special permit uh, for um, Seaside and Situate. Um, I'll start out just by noting that two members of our our board are not with us tonight um, for particular reasons, but um, it, it is the intent that they will um, review this particular uh, meeting uh, minutes and or video and file um, a Mullen rural certificate. Um, we're hoping we can keep everything together here and, and get to the, to the finish line on this thing. So. Um, I think that's where we where we would like to go tonight is to try to get all of the remaining issues uh, addressed if possible. If there's something open, we'll obviously have to have to get get that as well. Um, but um, I think where we want to try to go is make sure we've got a, a list of what's left to be addressed and and address those as we can going forward. Um, the uh, <coughs> And I note that we also have received some uh, additional comments, both from the proponents and from the public. Um, that I think everybody's had a chance to review. I saw some response letters and stuff, so we've got that. I want to make sure we just address that as well as we go forward. Um, so my uh, my thought here is that we can um, try to walk through the sort of the open items that that we have on our list. If you have a list of things that that's, are still open on your end, we would entertain discussing those as well. <clears throat> okay, if I can just introduce everyone. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm Bill Armberg. I'm here with Jeff Delisi. 
And I'm also here with, uh, from Toll Brothers, Dave Bauer, uh, Scott Michelli, and Dave Buckley. We also have with us uh, Kevin Klein, Mark Manganello, Jim Ash, and uh, Aaron Fredette. And <clears throat> since our last meeting, you've received, uh, well, you received Horsley and Witten's comments. Karen's been kind enough. She sat down uh, with Jeff Delisi and myself went over uh, several things. And during the course of this discussion, actually, Dave Bauer and uh, you've seen our written responses uh, relating to the uh, Proving Grounds group. And actually, earlier this week, uh, Dave Bauer and uh, Scott Michelli actually had a meeting with his spokesman. And we'll inform you about that because there were some, there's some other actions that probably that you're not aware of that we're going to, that we're going to pursue, which I think will be positively okay. received by the board. Is that um, something we should do now or for later? Well, we can, uh, as a matter of fact, we can. Uh, we have a number of items on our list, some of which might overlap. Well, why, why, don't we, why don't we hit those? I think they probably will overlap. So why don't we do don't that? that. And sure. I have on my list this actual comment letter, too, so I just okay. want to make sure we, we get to that. Um, Are you going over this list here? This yeah. Is okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'll start with uh, some of the follow-ups from last week. Um, we got your uh, write-up, sort of the, the summary of the, uh, of the purpose document or um, the goals and objectives yes. and how, it, how this project sort of fits into the residential cluster special permit. Uh, I appreciate you doing that. Uh, I think that was very helpful. Um, I will I will sort of turn it over to the board if you have any specific comments on that, on that document. Pat? No, I'm all set. It's clear. Thanks. Um, I didn't have anything specific. I just was very, the exercise of writing out the narrative was helpful to, want, you know, for me to digest everything and kind of mm -hmm. analyze it. But at this time, I don't have any specific call outs from, from that. Okay. Yeah, I don't either. Okay. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it covered um, everything that we were hoping that it would, and um, I think there was a good discussion about the sort of the purpose versus the sort of special permit sort of um, uh, requirements, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, I do note that uh, ultimately um, we're we're going to be working on findings of fact and then on uh, a decision. And that, that decision includes um, sort of a general statement about uh, whether the project's sort of in harmony with all the bylaws and stuff. But um, I think we have enough information, at least it's my feeling, uh, to, uh, to move on from that particular topic. But I wanted to make sure everybody had an opportunity to, talk, to uh, ask any questions. I agree with Ben that <clears throat> it was very helpful to have the narrative, you know, going through each individual yeah, it was, it's topic. easier than trying to piece together the yeah, slideshow, yeah. if yeah. you will. And um, I think it'll be helpful as we as we move forward on this. Um, the second item on my list was construction phasing. I see we got a new construction phasing document. I interject just one second yeah. on the link. That's and one of the things that I know Karen has had an opportunity to. Uh, discussing with the board. Uh, this past week, one of the things is kind of uh, in conjunction while we've been pursuing with the planning board all of these issues, uh, substantially most of the issues from a conservation standpoint we handled with them and at their request we had continued this for a period of six or seven months. Mm -hmm. And one of the suggestions was why don't we kind of re-engage and, and make sure we have everything. So there was a public meeting last Wednesday, of which uh, a few of the planning board meetings, the towns, Horsley and Witten's consultants, Karen, conservation agent, or whatever, where they reviewed all these things. But construction, construction sequencing was one of the topics of conversation there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if Karen's had a chance, but as we get into this, we'll talk. Um, no, I, I don't think we talked about that. Um, does it change what's no. been produced no, no, was, at this just, point? Was, or, um, no, it was just an explanation that hopefully one thing which is probably when you look at our sequencing uh, yeah. number nine because one of the uh, was commenced construction and modeling because one of the questions is where are these 
as you come in on Hadley Road, they'd be the first four units on the right-hand side. And one of the kind of the back and forth questions is, where is this vis-a-vis -vis any remediation? And there is no remediation in, in that area whatsoever. And so one of the thought processes, whereas at the outset of this, probably while the infrastructure is going on, simultaneously like that, they're probably going to start construction of the model units and also the clubhouse, which is in the area where there is no remediation or any of those type of issues. But that will be done after the remediation work is done? No, it will be done. There is no remediation work in that proximity. So the, re the remediation, I'm just looking at the sequencing here. That we you have it afterwards. You say environmental that, remediation. What we learned at that meeting was multiple items are going on at one time. Okay. So um, that doesn't mean that you can't condition that the other remediation be done first. But multiple items are going on at one time in the existing entrance at Hazerly Road where the existing paved entrance that goes into the site is going to be the initial construction entrance okay. into the site. And that's where actually there's... Does that road get ripped up? Of it, yes, eventually it does. But that's where, you know, a lot of the concrete um, is by there that's going to have to be crushed, et cetera. That's going to be the initial um, construction entrance. And, okay. and most... I, I guess I was just getting to the fact that there's a certain amount of remediation. I think as we've talked about it, uh, sort of the conversation was always that remediation work would be done before construction began on the units. And it sort of looks like the sequence is that way, but you're telling me that's not the case? They'll be going on, they'll be going on at the same time. The remediation work will start, but we want to start, and these aren't units for sale or anything, they're strictly for the marketing. Right. And so, um, what's the proximity of the remediation work to these things? Uh, Jim? <clears throat> the uh, I don't have a, a figure up that shows the where are the four locations. units. The uh, first first four on the right. First four on the right. When yeah, you as they came from Hadley gotcha. Road. Okay. okay. Is these guys? Yeah, these guys. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Yeah. The excavation work. Um, so is that road pr predominant over here? That's not the first. Is that the existing driveway right there? No. No. No, it's not. No. Right? No. no. So you're going to come in further. <clears throat> Um, on the south of that drawing mm -hmm. and go all the way over then right. yes. is what you're planning to do. And and then the remediation work with respect to all that is, I'm sorry, I missed it. Yeah, there are like four locations, but they're essentially over here. Okay. Larger ones here, smaller ones are in the vicinity of those uh, original older historical buildings. And they don't obstruct the access to those four units or anything like it? I mean, they'll no. be blocked no. off or fenced off or whatever? <clears throat> There's also some soil removal on the opposite side of Hadley Road, which also wouldn't be affected by that proposed work. Okay. How long do those remain model units? <clears throat> Basically, almost until everything's sold, and they're the last ones to be sold, or? Uh, if everything, Dave Bauer with Toll Brothers, if everything goes as planned, that's typically how it works. Sometimes <coughs> if uh, the market changes uh, and drives us towards uh, a different style of home maybe we might build a second model park but that's <coughs> not something we hope happens so okay. typically we would build the models decorate them and they would be the show homes for the life of marketing the project and then one of the one of the last units to or buildings to convey okay what one of the other thing and I know there's a lot of <coughs> pieces would I just want to bring more that probably isn't any good time but just to kind of roll these out so I don't forget them. One of the things we were talking with Karen about also is is part of uh, having to do with the selection is part of uh, the things that we're presenting and we hopefully by next time we before the board so I'll be done and finished is the Toll Brothers are going to are going to build the recreational facility behind Wampatuck School and the only reason I'm saying that not that it has to do with the planning board but that is to access that so you're not coming over Tilden Road. What would happen is, even though phase two, when we say we're not going to start phase two, we are going to want to put a haul road in there because when we're building that field behind there, it makes sense to access it through the property as opposed to accessing it through Tilden Road. And where the sequencing of that is, when at least talking with the town officials, That'll be built probably in, and I don't, and I'm not sure where it is. Probably not this July, 
but maybe a year from July because they need to have it built during the period when kids aren't in school. Mm -hmm. But that would mean you would be into phase two. Well, we're not going to construct phase two, but what I'm, what I'm saying is it makes, at least uh, talking to the town, it makes sense just to have a road through phase two for the purpose, just for the purpose of building that ball field there. Is now, it going in the same place that the proposed road is going? Or is it a different road altogether? This is just a hall road, isn't it? But yeah, it would just be an access road. Just an access road, that's all. So how, is it, how does it get managed with respect to drainage and runoff and all that stuff? It does, and it doesn't get paved or anything. Yeah, but you're going to cut a road through. Is that right. what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, remains yeah, remains it d remains won't dirt. Won't be filled. It won't sort of isolate drainage areas and things like that. Is it? Is, I think it's fair to say that it all has to get permitted, and it's just conceptual at this point. So I think, you know, we can't start evaluating or discussing where that road may be or the sequence because we don't know for ourselves yet. <coughs> but we've been asked to consider that type of an amenity and we're open to it and we're working on the concept but it's going to have to be permitted separately from this project so, so, so yeah. i would say Did that that would have to be a condition here is that yeah. i'd want to see the the proposed whatever road no, no, understood. i'm everything. just mentioning it now so i know on monday we're going to be submitting a lot of conditions for review and what i'm saying is one of the things on phase two because we're aware of the fact that phase two doesn't commence until it's appropriate time, except for that 25 foot yeah. if make it fall, yeah. Yeah. lops over, yeah. but that's yeah. another yeah. thing. Yeah. We put, yeah. Or if we're building an amenity here, yeah. and obviously yeah. you yeah. have to yeah. trees, yeah. approve yeah. what it is, because the bottom line is if you don't want it, then this is this is a municipal benefit. We can right. we have the trucks on Tilden Road, but the town's preference is well, that trees if you're already on the land, prefer to be there as opposed to on Tilden Road. And just for clarification, if I may. <clears throat> If I remember right, phase one was actually this whole thing here. Right. This would start right. phase two That's right step. here. Yes. Up. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Am I yeah. remembering yeah. that correctly? Right. Okay. So you're talking about at this point, this would already be phase one. Mm -hmm. There'd be some access road to get back here. Yes. Correct. I didn't mean to go off topic, but just. But the boy no, may just, want I to I guess what I'm, my point is, is that mm -hmm. it's fine to s suggest that as that's what the town would like, but the town would like to do that in a way that doesn't affect the stormwater management I'm and all of that I'm on this sure. site as well. Sure. So I would say, you know, conceptually that sounds fine. Well, that's um, that's fine. And I, 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 I understand, I understand that's on a tie <laughs> blanche. I understand right. that. Right. Right. Um, so the, the only thing I would say about the remediation work is that will begin before you begin the actual construction of the model homes? Yes. Okay. Well, let, why don't I segue into two other things, and again, well, we all get in there. Are we done with that one? Yes. Okay. I, I just want to make sure that once we start the remediation, we're going to go through and get it done. This right? is a remediation issue. Yeah. All right. And Dave, I don't know if you want to speak to it. Or? Well, I, I want to finish to make sure that you have a clear understanding is that the that the remediation you know there there are many tasks that in our eyes are considered you know first top priority and they work in tandem um, we intend to start the remediation as soon as possible mm -hmm. immediately as a, as a first order of business likewise in tandem we'd like to go pursue the model home and the model homes and the clubhouse first order of business but one may move faster than the other. Um, I, would, I would predict that remediation will move faster than home building because we have to go through the permitting process with the building department. Um, and we have to make sure that we have a, a, a roadway to get to those units. Um, but without a doubt, the remediation is intended to start as soon as we can start it after we have our permits regardless of what other ancillary work we might be doing, like setting erosion controls and uh, on the other side of the site or whatever right. it may be. I, w I would just say that's what we, I, I would prefer is that you start that. It doesn't, they don't have to be completed simultaneously or any, I mean, they don't have to be done one before the other as long as you're working continuously on the remediation and you don't start and stop for six months and then. Absolutely, one, one not related to the other. I would say it's just continuous action on the remediation. 
But there, there will also be concrete crushing and demolition of existing structures going on simultaneously We're too. Get to that. We're right. Yeah. That's so on we have my list. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and and that's really my point is that if we wanted to talk about how many items might start up front, that's a separate way of sort of slicing construction sequencing. And there are a number of things that start up front, including you know uh, the Tilden Road entrance and. The Hatherley Road improvements, I mean, there are just many things that we intend to do right out of the gates, certainly not a single file line. But remediation is intended to start right up front and not stop until we're done. Okay. Did you want me to talk about the fencing or something? Sure. Like well, let's, let's talk about the, the, why don't we talk about if we're talking about re remediation, monitoring, then we can talk about the concrete also. Okay. Um, well, Bear with me because I'm I'm jumping into the proving grounds group a little bit just because it's it, mm -hmm. it tackles no, it tackles a few relevant issues. Um, in in reviewing the letter submitted from the proving grounds group and um, sitting down with the spokesperson this week, um, we we were able to identify a few things that not only address the concerns that that group has, but there are issues that we've talked about um, here in this hearing, and so. Uh, there are a couple things that we wanted to clarify or offer that haven't been discussed before. And one item that's come up before is air monitoring. Mm -hmm. our, our RAM plan for the remediation uh, specifies some air monitoring during the remediation work. Right. And um, you know we have felt pretty strongly and have elaborated through our consultant that uh, we think that that's the limit of the air monitoring that needs to take place. But um, in, in, in hearing the feedback, we'd like to propose um, that we set up a similar air monitoring program for when we break into phase two and start the earthwork <coughs> along the property line next to the school. And for the first 30 days that we're doing uh, earthwork over there, we're, we're proposing that we do a similar type of air monitoring just to offer some peace of mind uh, to you know, a couple folks that have said, you know, why won't you just do a little bit of testing next to the school? So we don't feel it's really necessary, but we're, we're offering to do that for the first 30 days of moving Earth over there in phase two. Um, another point is during the remediation, um, one specific question that came out um, from the Proving Grounds discussion, uh, the Proving Grounds group was just the demarcation of the remediation areas and wanting to be comfortable that we might not have contractors erroneously driving through that area and tracking material or not realizing where they are on the site. So we, and correct me if I'm wrong, that if it's not, if it's already in the RAM plan, but we we'll definitely plan on um, putting like an orange construction fence around all the remediation areas right up front so that the access is very controlled and we might not have some vendor accidentally drive through the remediation mm -hmm. area. Um, Perhaps the, the, the biggest issue that has come up a number of times in this hearing, and then also an item raised by the uh, Proving Grounds group, is the noise concern um, related to concrete crushing. Yeah, and so that was brought up our, in our last meeting mm -hmm. here. So we made inquiries with uh, our site contractors, and um, there's a substantial cost related to it. Um, and just to give you a frame of reference, it's a hundred thousand dollar type of cost. It's a six-figure type of cost, but um, we're willing related to setting the baseline. We're we're, uh, we're willing to um, not have a concrete crusher on the site and handle the concrete without a crushing machine, um, and that includes you know extra handling of the material, uh, more labor involved in handling larger pieces of concrete. But we've talked it through with our contractor, and we think there's a way for us to handle the material. Some of it is to be repurposed on site as clean fill, uh, where it's you know, reasonable to do so. Some of it still needs to be carted off, and you, you, know, you pay, it. it's a whole different cost structure to handling concrete in that manner, rather than crushing it and being able to use it in, as process or whatever else. So um, that's something we're prepared to commit to, which is to not have a concrete crusher on the site. Okay. But there would be more trucks then taking that, <clears throat> that concrete away, potentially. In, in some cases, but we still, we still feel that we can use uh, in, in, as clean fill a large part of the concrete in, in certain areas where you just need uh, fill, doesn't need to be processed. So, you know, maybe there's more trucking, and Scott can correct me, but 
maybe there's more trucking now that we have to buy more material where we might have used the concrete under roads or around foundations or wherever it may be mm. there might be an added amount of trucking there uh, it's hard for me to quantify that all I know is the dollars that were <laughs> quoted to me when I made the decision to commit to it um, but we thought that eliminating that noise of the crusher was something that we were hearing from multiple uh, folks that were interested so as far as the concern of the board I think that was at least our interpretation one of the concerns relating to noise and we've eliminated that concern and yeah I think you know we went back and got the DP regs on the noise and stuff and it looked like you would have to establish a baseline and then have some measurement against it in order to yeah. sort of adequately do it so and that bullet point like that says noise monitoring does that mean that there still will be noise monitoring or not well the the conundrum you have is that just because you're moving crushing somewhere else that doesn't eliminate the DEP noise regulation, right? And so the same standards apply. Uh, I, I guess, and I'll ask you the question, does that mean that without the concrete crushing, you'll be able to, to stay within those standards? I have, I have no idea. Is uh, I Presumably, yes, we're leaving out the trees or whatever it is, but the amount of noise here is going to be the same as any other subdivision that has been built in my town of Situate for the last 75 years. Okay. Well, there's demolition here that a lot of these other subdivisions don't do, right? Particularly concrete demolition. You still got to get it out of wherever it is, right? So I'm assuming you're busting it up. You're not trying to dig it up as a whole foundation or, or something like that, right? But we would expect to be able to comply with, with those regs. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just realize that those are the regulations, right? So yep. th those are what would have to be established. And if you may have you may want to think about this but in order to if there is a problem right in order to demonstrate it you have to actually stop the noise creating function to establish a baseline so you can then measure what happens when you start creating the noise right so yep. you'll have to deal with that um, as if if the issue comes up but I think eliminating the, the concrete crushing is going to go a long way I don't know what the I don't know what the noise is going to be like with uh, the concrete removal. Mm -hmm. But um, so in any event, there's there are you know, DEP noise regulations that apply to the to the boundaries of the property, and and those will obviously be part of your overall permit requirements. Uh, they're just standing requirements anyway. Um, good. Um, anything else on the phasing? So your intent on the, on the hall road would be sort of a, a soft commitment, and then you would come back at at some point in time with a with a modified design or analysis that shows whether this is feasible or not. On which hall road? On the the, the recreation the on the back of the oh, you mean for the for the for the half yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. we don't anticipate doing that work until probably a year from July yeah okay um, so let's see well we talked about remediation did we cover everything on remediation. Elements. I mean, I, I think we've looked at that, and we've got a lot of comment back from um, Horsley Witten on the on the ramp plan. So, I, I think we've covered the issues that have, that have come up. I least. think we've covered the major issues. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, noise monitoring. We talked about um, surety. Uh, we needed to talk about the surety. Um, I think what was <coughs> remind me what you originally proposed. Well, we've changed what we originally proposed. Okay. Remind, remind me what make you changed. Even simpler. <laughs> okay. Even simpler. Uh, I have spoke. I spoke today with uh, Jim Boudreau, and he has sat down and spoken with the treasurer, and they're amenable to what the Toll Brothers Normal Protocol is. They issue a surety bond for the entire cost or whatever the town 
consulting engineers and DPW says for the missing for infrastructure, so sure and born for a full national company. Uh, one of the things at the last meeting we were talking about was kind of akin to uh, the rules and regulations of subdivision control in, in 41U was putting on a covenant and the prohibition of conveyancing and then at some point when a lot of the infrastructure is then, then substituting a surety bond, uh, the Toll Brothers are willing at the outset to bypass the entire covenant and we, are, we will post a full surety bond for the entire model, albeit it's a much larger cost right up front uh, prior to construction. And one of the things what, that we would do, because once, once we have our permits, they're going to they're gonna move with alacrity. So what would actually happen is, upon the issuance of this decision, we will actually, and that's why I want to ask the board's preference, because we also understand that the municipality has, uh, particularly DBW, has a lot on their plate, particularly with the most recent storm. And so what we would do is we would get our cost construction together <coughs> and literally have that so that the towns will pay for the town's consulting engineers to actually do that. The DPW has been overlooking too, but I don't want to put anything on their plate. And such that we anticipate that we will have that remedy that by, by the time of the expiration of the appeal periods and endorsement of the plans, we'll be able to put a bond in place at that point. So you'll pay for the, uh, for the evaluation of the, essentially the cost of the project? Yes. I got you. Okay. <clears throat> I think we've done that in the past. So that, that sounds like that would work. Any questions on that? No. As long as it's okay with the town and the yeah, I mean, as long as all the okay legal matters. You lawyers see. can get together and discuss it, make sure it's okay. <laughs> um, I have a note here, what sheets to record? Is that, have you guys? Karen was, Karen was kind of, it, it, I think Karen, we came down is obviously the the overview sheets, the opening sheets, all of the uh, the drainage sheets, and uh, actually I think we enumerated them. <coughs> it says here in our notes three, five, forty nine, fifty, and fifty nine. Yeah. Um, it just it sounds like a, a small s subsection of a very massive roll of drawings. <laughs> The ones that I was recommending had um, had easements and stuff like that, something that's binding on the applicant on. You know, you don't want every drainage plan, you don't want every you don't want every plan recorded. These things that had app had um, like easements had conditions, something that was going to be in a condition, something that's not in a condition, but you had said you wanted, like the traffic, uh, the traffic signal mm -hmm. uh, for the crosswalk. That sheet would get recorded mm -hmm. because it has something that you wanted. So ultimately, we'll decide that as we put together a proposed uh, um, decision. Yeah. In terms of making sure we've got all the right right drawings. Yeah. Two, two things also, which, which we will submit that shortly. One of the things in on sheet 50, one of the things, in, and this is kind of esoteric, but any the work that we're doing to improve the Hadley Road drainage up to 6th Avenue, mm -hmm. anything that's in a municipal way, there isn't an easement because mm -hmm. it's a municipal way. But as you come out onto Hadley Road, there's a small portion on our side, on the west side of Hadley Road, where there'll be an easement on our property, and we will reflect that on sheet 50 with the other easement. So, so it's fully gotcha. inclusive. Okay. The, other, the other thing, just to point out, is there's on this on the recording the sheets of the plan. That's there's and we'll make some su suggestions. There's a little bit of a conundrum. This is land court land, remember, and they have a whole different set of registration requirements that don't apply to things. And we were brainstorming with Cameron about how to address some of these. So that's one of the reasons why we don't want to record all these sheets in a plan because anything we do have to record, we actually have to get. Just to explain briefly, is when you have uh, any plan that's a land that's land court lands approved by the planning board, in a nutshell, 
that plan has to go to the land code engineering division in Boston. And what happens is they don't even accept that plan. They draw a brand new plan. And their time lag on that now is about three to four years. So what happens in the interim is these plans are approved. When they're approved, what happens for any plans to actually physically be recorded in the registry district of Plymouth County, they have to be stamped and approved by the Boston Land Court Engineering Division. So that's how that happens. Because amongst other things, because these are not plans that are A and R plans or plans under subdivision control, the actual mechanism to get this on record will be that the plans will actually be an exhibit to the special permit decision. And then the special permit decision with exhibit A, plan sheets one through seven, and in the decision, now I'll show this linguistically, why would I suggest, and linguistically the other 62 or 67 sheets incorporated by reference filed in the office of the planning board of the town is situate. That's how the land court, I've already made a, a query with the chief attorney from the land court, and that's the way he wants to see it done. Hmm. And, and just curious, <clears throat> yeah, it does sound complicated. <laughs> these, um, one, two, I think there's five. These five that you recommend, that's kind of been agreed upon, or did that come from you, Karen? But it's agreed upon from us. It's agreed upon at the moment, but things could change as we, write, as we write conditions. So, of course. I okay. Mean, you know, uh, and, we need to keep and, it flexible. Yeah, and, and as, a, as a side, as Karen said, if there's, if there's other sheets that the board feels make sense, we, we, there'll, be, there'll be no objection. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you for the education. <laughs> Um, trap roots. Um, so we, I think we had finally agreed on kind of the route you were going to take, right? <coughs> yeah, what, 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 I think Ka Karen had a suggestion. We're not going to take. Yeah, right. Ka Karen, Karen had a suggestion that yeah. basically we are eliminating. We're, we're going to say they're going to truck there. You know how what the predominant thing is, so that there's not an overstress in any given neighborhoods. We're going to have. Uh, routes that we will not take, kind of vis-a-vis -vis the vinyl road. Mm -hmm. I think you said Man Lot, Man Hill, and Front Street, Karen? Yeah, and we've added, um, we've added some more. So there's Booth Hill Road, Man Lot Road, Man Hill Road, Upper Tilden from proposed access beyond towards Wampatuck School, Front Street, Greenfield Lane, Meeting House Lane, Vinyl Ave, Captain Pierce Road, Curtis Street, Arbor Way, Hollett Street. I thought we had discussed not using like Beaver Dam and then turning at Jericho. That that was a bad intersection well, right there. We already know predominantly how it's going to go. And all, all those roads they just named the roads you wouldn't use. Yeah. No right. These are roads that you wouldn't yeah. use because they're windy. These are windy. These, these, these are crossroads <laughs> through residential <laughs> neighborhoods. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, they come off. And we don't want right. So we. We just, just don't want people cutting through them. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess the reason, and I totally understand all that, I'm just saying that based on this prohib prohibition, <clears throat> they could still drive down Beaver Dam and then turn left on Jericho. And I That's thought we correct. Said, I thought we, we didn't want that. Well, well, with the nature of the truck silage, is we've already schemed out the larger trucks. There's only a very limited way, but so you don't get into technicalities if you have a van or, you know, a, a Ford 350, you're not going to determine those. Those, those are vis-a-vis those are -vis the same as, even though it's a truck, it's, well, it's, it's, the, same as, it's the same as a passenger car. This list still has to be vetted through the fire department and police department. Okay. Um, okay. For, for, final, for final, they may add more, they may, um, but this has been vetted through DPW and building department. Okay. Okay. Karen, um, just one other I consider adding is um, Stockbridge Road because it's pretty narrow and people have a tendency to speed up it anyways. Um, just throwing that out there. And we see there's a lot of cross streets that go off of Stockbridge from here, so that we figured that essentially eliminated Stockbridge. But if that's what the board wants, we can add Stockbridge to it. Well, you could take Stockbridge all the way down to uh, 
You could take Stockbridge to first, first parish, parish. parish, but you couldn't do anything in between. Right. But if the board wants to add Stockbridge, we can add Stockbridge. Uh, the, the only thing I'd consider, again, the more you add, the more concentration you're putting in there. De facto, there are very, very few roads that large trucks are going to go on. So in other words, they're not going to try to go down these, but all of a sudden, someone's drawing a Ford 350 down Stockbridge Road because they want to go to Dunkin' Donuts. I, you know, I don't know if you want to create this type of conundrum. Well, I, I, would, I would say, can we qualify this road limitation based on this type and size of vehicle, right? So any, any delivery, any haul truck, right, that's moving earth, moving concrete out now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all of that, I think we want those um, on the routes we talked about. But if somebody's, you know, driving an F-150 or something, they, they could probably come down any road, right? Um, as long as it doesn't become, you know, a fleet of F-150s driving the same way all the time, you know, it doesn't become 200 of them, you know. Um, but I'll, let's get the, the other input and then we can zero in on this, I think. Um, Encroachment on 60-foot buffer. Uh, let's see. Is road, so, is road F the yeah, <coughs> phase two? Roads. The road F turn around. The road B turn around. These are all, they don't fall under the bylaw. Do oh, you have it? Oh, thank you. There you go. We just took the liberty of highlighting um, up where the encroachments are with the buffer on the construction phase of the plan. So are those the dark areas you say? The, the yellow. The oh, yellow the is the, the, buffer, the yellow right? is a sixty foot buffer. The green right. areas are part of the stormwater basins, which can be landscaped. Uh huh. Right. And the uh, the dark areas. You have one of them is your entrance road into the site, but you obviously need an entrance road into the right. site. You have a little piece at the road right here, there, right and here. you have the uh, the fire department turnaround um, up at the end of Ermine, and you have the connecting road, and you have the cul-de-sac in Ermine Street that are in the 60-foot buffer. What the bylaw actually says is it says the 60 foot buffer only applies to residential structures and accessory uses. It does not apply to roads, roadways. So none of these things are structures or accessory uses to structures. Can I point out also that the landscaping plan shows quite a bit of planting in some of these areas too? In particularly road, um, road one, my B. eyes are shot. B. B, as in Bravo. Uh, we've got quite a bit of planting behind the end of that cul-de-sac and along that. Which one is that? I'm sorry. Along, <laughs> along Marion, along Marion Street. That above oh, yeah, Marion yeah. Street. Yep. yep. Okay, well, I think obviously the street access and those kinds of things you have to do. Right. It's whether um, you're encroaching enough that it's as long as it's sort of planted or replanted there they do have an extensive planting plan um, but they they also include trails and you, there are utilities in the buffer as well um, but they do have extensive planting mm -hmm. um, shown on the planting plan for a lot of the buffer area so what's the what what is the plan from a construction point of view for that buffer then are you are are you demarking that with a fence or uh, something like that? Well, Meaning? Well, well in we're in phase two. Most of that stuff on the left is all phase two stuff. I think what you're saying, it's a buffer. It's not a no, what do you, um, Yeah, the grading that goes into it's a no touch zone. Yeah, because <laughs> right. yeah, there's temporary disturbance and it's being replanted. Yeah. Right, but the objective is not to disturb it if you don't have to, right? right. So right. Is, is there, so you want to avoid having trucks running through the buffer zone and all that kind of stuff, right? It was a limit of work. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll have it staked out and marked, and we, we, I mean, we have a vested interest in preserving that buffer yeah. 
for ourselves. So the, another thing that we intend to do is to put um, some sort of a construction fence up along the property line to the school, um, just acknowledging that we might create an attractive nuisance and we don't want kids to sort of slip through the woods and end up anywhere on the site. And we'll have signage as well. Radiation keep out. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah, well, I, I think the, the objective is to protect a buffer at where we're at all possible, right? And avoid the problem with the buffer is once you wipe it out, it's hard to get it back. Yeah. It takes a while for it to grow back yeah. or whatever. Well, it takes as vested interest is any buffer that we disturb, we have to replant. So anything we can yeah. preserve, we want to preserve. Yeah, it's just that uh, if you have existing vegetation there that provides a good buffer now, if you disturb it or destroy it, even replanting it takes a long time for it to really come back and be a buffer again. Right. Yeah. Okay. But <clears throat> just curious, since we're talking about that, like with the construction, what I'm hearing is that there'll be like, let's say basically right about here or something is the existing road. I mean, that, the existing road that's going to be used, as you said, to do those units initially when we talked about, I mean, that's going to go through the buffer, too. So it already does. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is, but they're then, then they're replanting that, so that's kind right. of a bonus, per se. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you all to look at the landscape plans. They are extensive, but to determine, to see if you think that that's enough landscaping. It may mean that you want to add, say, 30 trees to be placed randomly after the site is all landscaped so to enhance the buffer but please please look at the landscape plans before the next meeting that they do show extensive landscaping okay um, pressure we talked about determination of drain pipe is HDPE or RCP did we determine that well Two things. One, with the recent storms and hurricanes and all this stuff, I, I uh, haven't had uh, DPWs been upside down and backwards. Uh, our proposition of putting uh, that we're putting to this, and again, they're making recommendations, is we we feel that the type of pipe in the toll brothers is going to be a restriction on this as a perpetually private uh, private housing development, and that we want to use the type of pipe that is the industry standard, but any piping that is within the public way or outside of this, then certainly the DPW's recommended thing we'd use that. Uh, the second issue, the only two open issues with them, was having to do with, which kind of was a request, and I think there was a long discussion about this in, I don't want to misspeak, is that Irving Road, the 350 feet? Irvine. Irvine. Irvine, Irvine, Irvine excuse me. Mm -hmm. Is that that does nothing to address. We can't, it's either one of two things. There is no place to loop this. On Ermine Road, we are by virtue of connecting to that, we're inclusive and we're helping the water looping there. We will loop the water back on itself on phase two. It's a phase two issue, basically. Uh, if we want, if, if they want to loop it back on us, we'll loop it back on ourselves. We don't think it's necessary, but certainly there's no, <coughs> there's no scientific or engineering reason why putting 350 feet of anything in Ermine Road does anything to address that issue. So, um, yeah, because that, that was the issue before. This is not, um, this is not installing a loop, right? When we were talking about the 350 feet. Yeah, it does nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Um, and did we hear anything back from DPW on this? Or no. No, they've been no. upside down. So. No. Yeah, so okay. I would say that, I, <clears throat> you know, that's sort of <clears throat> their well, recommendation. Gonna, the first of the week after the, we threw this storm, I'm gonna hopefully sit down with the head of the DPW and the head engineer and get to They the wanted it, they wanted it the 350 feet in lieu of looping back on itself because they don't think looping back on itself does any does any good. Mm -hmm. That's that's well, that, was their, that was their that was their logic. That was their logic, but yeah. I mean, 
we haven't heard back from them so okay well maybe something we just put a condition on that it needs to get resolved right <clears throat> um, well I, mean, I think we can resolve it in the next month I would I would hope as long we as the re weather cooperates resolve it in the next month right. <laughs> okay um, well I think both of those need to be resolved with DPW Right, but, but at the end of the day, I do point out that's a recommendation. It's up to the board to yes. decide. Um, question came up, does the HOA protect the town if the town has to fix any infrastructure or roads? That was a question that um, I guess you brought up, Karen. Right, and so... Is that a question that came from town council? Um, that's a question. I mean, I tried to compile. I tried to compi compile all your quest people's questions mm -hmm. on the board. So I, it might have come from. I don't remember oh, so exactly, I, exactly I can that where it came from. Okay. Uh, the, on the to do list, we're waiting to hear back from town council. We will resolve this because one that explicit provision is in the master deed, which was submitted some time ago. That's one. But the second thing, which we have which we've corresponded on, but we haven't spoken live, is there was some confusion, the me member of town council reviewed this, having to do with phasing and what they, and what the misunderstanding is that phasing is mentioned in the master deed as a statutory meaning under chapter 183A, which means that as a group of units comes into existence and I won't get into how it works there's actually a phasing amendment saying we're bringing in units one through four five through eight and the reason is it has to do with financing under Fannie Mae Freddie Mac that's how you have to do it but it has nothing to do with construction phasing so that's right. a confusion I mean, yeah I think yeah. we talked about that last yeah. time right yeah, yeah. The, the third thing well we'll we'll get out there also is one of the things the bylaw says we have designated all the plan and what the open space is and there'll be a condition in the permit which will suggest that for it'll remain in perpetuity open space one of the in the homeowners association by virtue again it's all esoteric stuff but by virtue of committing the property under a master deed to chapter 183a what it means is that all the common area which is everything other than the units themselves is owned by the association in perpetuity. It is not severable from the unit ownership. It isn't by the law, all right? So the decision <coughs> condition will incorporate that. One of the things that the bylaw says, albeit this is a bylaw that was established for a single purpose 40 years ago and has not been modified as the whole rest of the bylaws modified eight times it says that there will be a restriction perpetuity in the language is in there what my suggestion is is the town council is in the special permit decision it explicitly says because a special permit decision is in perpetuity also it doesn't change because it's the basis on which the zoning was established that it verbatim Braxton, this property is is subject to the restriction that the open space will remember bah, 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 verbatim of what the bylaw says. In our opinion, that addresses that that situation. But we'll make sure town council. Yeah, we'll but <coughs> run that one by town council because they, right. I think the bylaw says one of need a restriction one of three different ways, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't but, know that it that no. it, but it says if the homeowners association, yeah, I've read it very thoroughly. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that you have to go to the state or anything. It's just right. a restriction enforceable by the town mm -hmm. if the homeowners association is owning it, which it is. It's, it's, a, it's a different provision than right. what it was in the flexible. The, the yeah, the flexible it is. That we recently discussed. So the language is different. The language is different, absolutely. But but if it's in the homeowners association, it's a home right. right. It's going to be and in the, the homeowners, homeowners association, association has built into it the ability for the homeowners to change things. 
then yeah, but, that's but not this will I, be this will this be, be what, a part of the special permit that it will be put in there to be preserved as open space in perpetuity yeah so okay yeah so it, it'll be in the special I'll permit which isn't all okay. <clears throat> uh, that, that's the open space but on this bullet where it says the town has to fix infrastructure and roads is this is <clears throat> I'm just trying to understand that is this bullet point the fact that if the construction to, for some reason it doesn't get complete or the fact that after the fact after it's already done there's some need to for the town to go and I don't know, do it's, it's a uh, triple belt and triple suspenders you know it, it, in other words the town has zero obligation to do anything mm -hmm. but if for some unforeseen reason the town wanted to do something they could well they might want to do something to protect Health and safety. Uh, health and safety yeah. or other infrastructure that's tied into this. Correct. Right? Water, okay. whatever. Yeah. Right? You know, they could want to do things right. that makes as sense. an immediate action, as an right. emergency action. And, and we just want protection against that, right? right. Okay. Yeah, so the, so yeah. the language is in the Master Deed in Section 5, uh, the very last paragraph of Section 5. Yeah. It's an easement for the benefit of the town situated for purposes of. Um, Maintaining roadways, water distribution, sewer distribution, stormwater facilities, etc. So it's there, mm -hmm. and it's been reviewed by town council. She didn't seem to have a substantive comment uh, concerning that issue. She okay. didn't have any comments concerning the master deed. Okay. Um, I, I think this this comment came up a little bit later in the. Uh, the proving grounds letter as well is, is sort of who's in charge and and how do we monitor and manage uh, what's going on uh, during the construction process um, so I, I'd kind of like to hear a little bit more about what what the uh, plan is here well we we um, from our standpoint there are as many layers as there could be in terms of monitoring we we have our own um, internal oversight structure obviously um, is there a single point of contact that there has is we overall responsibility there, for the project there, there really uh, there is um, and in this case he's sitting right here um, and also uh, Scott is in charge of the site development part of the project but Dave Buckley is ultimately that one name that you can call for anything under the Sun seven days a week 24 hours a day <laughs> 22 hours a day. <laughs> should, um, <laughs> should that be <clears throat> something that's posted um, like on a sign or public I'm just thinking of like what happened with morning glories where you know there was the, the planning board had all these restrictions for construction and supposedly, according to the the bakery, you know they were they couldn't find the right person to contact. They talked to someone. It wasn't so. You know, how do you go to that? Well, we person? we take we handle that during the pre-construction conference. We get right. we get this we get all the contact information, and I think Morning Glories is a different situation. They were advised that if trucks were blocking, to call the police as the first line of enforcement. I mean, and then, you know, let us know too, but call the police because they're, they're the ones who have the ticketing authority. Okay. So mm -hmm. we will have 24 hour contact information. That's part of the information that's collected at the pre construction conference. Okay. I, I'm, I'm as interested in sort of how do we coordinate as this process goes along because there's a lot of sort of information and inspections or uh, process that has to happen between the the project in the town that was really the second part was yeah. we have just uh, really just for your information we have our on-site team that's led by Dave Buckley and we'll have construction uh, licensed construction supervisors um, and Scott will be in charge of the site development and will he'll be contracting um, a licensed contractor to do the major site improvements mm -hmm. and then Scott can speak to um, in terms of the town's uh, supervision and inspection yeah sure I think uh, you know one of the comments in the proving ground letter was about unfettered access and of course we're we're totally open to that uh, you know if the Board of Health inspector wants to come out on any given day you know they're welcome to I assume <coughs> that the planning board um, intends to have some type of um, 
uh, most times we're funding some 53G account to have, uh, uh, whether it's Horsley and Witten or somebody else, yeah. conduct uh, inspections of the site improvements as they're going in. So uh, we kind of well, expect- I think we will want that and, and we'll yep. probably want to put together sort of a plan of what are all those things because some of them may be more than just a site inspection. We've got a lot of requirements here and we want to make sure they get implemented as we go so we're not after the fact sort of having to deal with stuff that got missed. There'll be thir a third, there'll, there'll be a condition for third party inspector mm -hmm. and it's going to be all the items that are typically in the subdivision regulations. So that's drainage, sewer, water, mm -hmm. um, and then anything else you want. You already have the requirement. They've already agreed that our, the town's licensed site professional can be there when they're doing uh, excavation of the areas and agree upon all the limits and then there'll be whatever the town wants for uh, air quality monitoring and um, whatever we decide on noise. Mm -hmm. But the, the basic stuff is going to be the same as the subdivision regulations. Right. I think it'll be dependent upon what ultimately all the conditions are. Right. The uh, special permit. Okay. Um, We talked about the, did we talk about the deed restriction for open space? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Deed restriction for over 55. Is in the master deed. That is in the master yes, deed. Yes, And And there's a, uh, it, it's controlled, there's language right in there. And what what is that? It's the federal, Dave Buckley, what is it? What's the act? FHAA. It's federal uh, Fair Housing Act. Yeah, yes, it's, 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 it's an amendment to the FHAA. The bottom line is, is I, 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 I've begun the process of, of uh, with Karen and writing conditions or suggested conditions, and there'll be one in there that yeah. addresses. It'll, 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 it'll be condition of the permit referencing the deed. And it's only one member of the household, correct? Right. One occupant, yeah. and uh, no, no. Um, children under the age of 18 can live except for a period of up to 90 days. So if you have a child visiting for the summer, that sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Highly self-governed, I can promise you. You know, the residents really uh, are intent on keeping that way uh, for, for themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I, I guess the other one was just... Uh, uh, submitting for review the SWIP plan, private construction. Okay. That'll be a condition. Yeah. Okay. A um, couple other things that were brought up was really about, and I don't know if the Port of Health is probably not here now, um, was about irrigation wells. Um, and I don't know where you stand on that, but are you pursuing the process of permitting those? or? Yep, we are. Okay. Um, and um, we may have asked this, but I don't remember the answer. How many wells are we talking about? Well, as far as what we're applying for, how many we'll ultimately need. Um, right now, we have applications in for the, the single family residences and as well as eight for the main uh, body of the site as applications. However, um, it's all yield dependent. If we drill one well and it, it, it produces enough yield for the whole site, and the answer may be one that we ultimately use. Um, you really can't tell until after you drill the well and, and determine what yield you're going to get out of it. Our water withdrawal permit is already conditioned on no use of municipal water for anything other than household use. Or right. Not for <coughs> right. On that. Are, these, are these like deep wells, artesian wells kind of thing? or? or Bedrock wells. Yeah. And the Board of Health does have all has has an application in for all that. But you're applying one for each resident, so it's like 142. No, it's no, one for each of the, single, of the, family. the single family homes, the oh, A and R. Single family, okay. And then uh, eight for the condominium, but we we eight would expect whole complex. We would expect less than that, if, um, typically. The Board of Health just recently, like within months as opposed to years, has new, has regulations governing the wells, which they didn't, I don't think they even had any prior to this. So. No, they didn't, no. but they have all new breaks. Yeah. 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 So, and the standards are really, um, 
crazy strict. <laughs> they have to meet drinking water standards, basically. For irrigation. For wow. irrigation. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess we're still waiting for the Conservation Commission um, in terms of where do you stand on that? We were supposed to meet them on Monday, but the meeting was canceled because of the weather. So the meeting was going to come on. Uh, we're meeting with them on this following Monday to reschedule all the meetings from Monday. But we're confident that we've addressed all the issues which they have. And what we're really doing is we've actually been in a holding mode for eight or nine months now. And because what we don't want to do is to close that hearing and have there be a planned tweak here such that we have that mm -hmm. real good process. Okay. So what we anticipate is when this decision is voted at the following meeting of the Conservation Commission, we will set the order. And I'm coordinating with the Conservation Commission all the time. <clears throat> and the mitigation agreement, that's what you were referring to with uh, <clears throat> the Board of Selectmen and the, um, the recreation fields uh, as part of that, right? And, and, and what's going on, I know for a while back, you talked about this piece. Yeah, what, what, what is happening is just, again, a slightly matter, but just to give you the transparency on that is the land that is to be, that is not, which doesn't constitute the building lots, we are offering that to the town. The town, the selectmen are making the decision on that. And what the statutory provisions are is the town can accept it subject to the care and custody of the Conservation Commission and it can just be done but it restricts it and as everyone's aware there's been a lot of issues about who owns the land and all this on numerous parcels and this so we're deferring to where the selectmen have it and what will happen in all likelihood if the selectmen warrant <coughs> under just the general care and custody of the towns, what will happen is they'll bring a warrant out of go on the fall town meeting and bring it to to accept that. And so the intention is is to give that to the town. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that was kind of the the list we had. Um, and then I know we got the, the letter from the Friends of the Proving Ground or whatever it was. Um, and we got letters back, I guess, from all three of your Correct. consultants in, in various areas. Um, and it sounds like you've had a conversation with them at this point. Yeah, and and actually, there's folks here. Uh -huh. and, but just let me yeah. make sure I understand. So you've already had a conversation. You've agreed to to do a few additional things that we talked about <coughs> earlier. Was there anything else? Uh, I was able to touch on everything from our meeting. We went over every item in the list, some of which we just needed to clarify okay. or elaborate on. Um, but I've, I've, been able, I've touched on the items that, that we've agreed to offer. Uh, okay. I thought, I thought of one additional um, thing today um, in going over things. Bicycle parking. Is there going to be any bicycle racks? The yes. I think we put them at the, the clubhouse. Do we? I think they're on the plans at okay. the clubhouse. It's a small okay, then rack. I'll double check that again. Okay. If, if they're not shown on the plans, they're certainly easy to add. There are a number of a um, long time ago. Okay. functionality okay. type of features the that we plans. haven't really specced out yet. But we can put okay. that no, in. No, I was just going something. over Vanessa's yeah. letter again, and so that's just, you know. Okay. I think they might have made on the landscape set for some reason. Okay. All right. And I think we had two um, two comments that came in from Horsley Witten as well, right, on the stormwater review. Right, right, the stormwater review. They're they're happy that the stormwater um, yep. meets rate and volume, um, and um, I believe recharge requirements. Right. So they're they're pleased that the stormwater is pretty much is in. Right. It sounded like we, they were pretty much um, right in in agreement with everything. There they're, were they're in agreement. One or two sort of items that. I assume had been discussed, but um, that were that was in their letter. Right, they're they're in agreement with the stormwater. Okay. And the other thing, just while Karen, did I cut you off? Nope. Right. 
just the other thing, one thing we did receive a letter, and I discussed it sometime well, again with the storm. Yeah, storms. Uh, if you haven't had chances, I explained it before with Bob Vogel wrote a letter about clubhouse parking, and just to explain to the board, but we'll have the we'll have his concurrence. We've already had the discussion some time ago. We're going to refresh everyone's recollection. Is the parking two things? One, the clubhouse is for the people who are here. Our parking requirement is, I don't know how much it is, but it's certainly more than 100 spots, probably with each unit has four spots. And so we have a gross excess of parking that's more than that. And they put the number of parking spaces uh, there that they thought were, in other words, we thought were appropriate for this, but the vast majority of people in here are using in other words, they're walking, they have their own parking. So the number of parking spaces is an enormous excess of parking spaces than you probably actually need. So are you, where was that leading? Are you suggesting that no, you're? No, no, what I said is I, because of the, the weather, I will clarify that with Bob Bowie. Okay, we'll go all right. That's all. Gotcha, all right. Um, Let's see. I, I think that was everything on my list. Let's, um, let's, if nobody on the board has a comment, let's open it up to any public comment. I don't know, a lot of people. Yes. I'm, I'm still concerned. Could you identify yourself? Well, I'm Elise Klein at 675 Chief Justice. And I'm, I guess the bells go off in my head, especially about the sinking of wealth, um, because um, one is water is a potable water is a very sensitive issue, but two because I remember the difficulty we had sinking wells, uh, for instance on the Green Estate, and this was when I was on the Water Committee. And I don't know if you have contacted the people on the Water Committee to get their spin on that. I think they have a very good knowledge of what's going on with the water table and the underlying strata there. You may want to think about that. Um, well, they've been sure. they've been copied in on everything. That, oh, they have. Yeah. yeah so we've okay. made heard, sure that the Water Resources Commission is okay. clued in. So. Okay. Uh, and it did lead. It right. still led to the conversation about the overall capacity of the town to provide ongoing new connections to the water supply system and, and part of kind of an outfall of all this is is a proposal to do a much more sort of comprehensive evaluation of the town's water supply system and how we determine whether we have capacity for new hookups or not. Um, I think that in the past it's been a fairly um, rudimentary approach to, to make that decision and, and it probably needs a, a little more uh, sort of analytical thought and, and, a, and kind of a consistent approach to do that. So that has been something that I know um, Karen, and Brad, and others have been, in, along with this, the selectmen as well, have been working to put together a more comprehensive evaluation that addresses both water and sewer. Uh, and so we're looking forward to actually getting that going, I think. Right. In addition, we had separate water and sewer studies done for this project mm -hmm. to show that there is capacity um, for for this development. Um, yes. Hi. Um, my name is Kathy Flynn Woodland, and we live down on Oceanside between six and seven, kind of like mm -hmm. Ground Zero. When it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have been to a couple of the early meetings and I just wanted to clarify what I think I'm hearing now in terms of some of the evolution of this big project. And one is that, you know, as we drive up and down Hatherley, there's massive amounts of water in Hatherley and it flows down 6th and 7th. And I know there's been perk tests done, I know there's a number of different things that have done, and I think what I heard earlier is that you have a drainage remediation plan but I'm not sure that it encompasses that. I mean, we drove by tonight and took photos of it because it's it's like a little geyser that's coming up and there's a lot of water that's coming down. We don't know what that water contains. We don't know if there's contaminants in it. We also have flood water on the other end of where it lands. So 
Our concern is that type of remediation that's happening at that point on Haverly and for the east side of Haverly. Um, the other question I, I hope as you were talking about, I never heard the tail end of it too, is that we park at the top of 6th when it floods. And are you offering us parking spots uh, in the spot <laughs> when it floods? Uh, we need to know that. And if we need a, se a separate sticker, you know, let us know. We have our other stickers. We're happy. Um, and I think the, the third thing is really the environmental impact for the marsh. And I was thinking that I was hearing that that was going to be in perpetuity given over to the town. That's correct. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. um, that makes me feel a little better, but that means we have to work with the town because that is a major drainage area for when it floods. We can't tell you how happy we are with our seawall. Yes. It has made an enormous Huge. difference, and we love it but we also need drainage. And that marsh is a major implication for us surviving the floods. Mm -hmm. And part and parcel of the construction that's going to happen on the east side of Hatherley is an impact to that marsh. And we want the town to be fully aware and work with the Conservation Commission, other engineering, environmental engineering, to make sure that that is an appropriate drainage system for our community. We're a tight neighborhood, and we rely on it. Um, thank you. I, I guess I will go back to just the first comment you made about the remediation effort and the water drainage effort, and I will let, if, if you have somebody here who wants to address that. Uh, well, can I, uh, can I just to try and make it succinct? Um, uh, Dave Bauer with Toll Brothers, um, I, I, I certainly don't want to shrug off your question, um, but it, there's really a lengthy, lengthy answer to those issues. And um, I, I really would encourage you to watch the meetings that have been recorded because um, there are great presentations by some of the folks in the room that really speak to different parts of the site, exactly how much water is going here or there, both through the Conservation Commission and through the Planning Board. So I don't mean to not answer the question, but mm -hmm. there's, there are great answers in those meetings. But generally speaking, um, the challenge with this site, and one of the reasons, frankly, I think it hasn't been developed, and one of the challenges we've had for now three years is managing the stormwater properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way I would say it put very simply is, um, you know, we have a high groundwater table, as all of you know better than we do because you live there. Uh, we have tough soils, which you're probably familiar with. And the regulations in town, to the town's credit, are the most stringent that you can have from an engineering standpoint, where we have to prove out that we are not sending more water in any direction off the site. And likewise, we have to prove out that we are not sending less water to the resource areas like the wetlands. So that balancing act is incredibly difficult, especially when you have a high water table and poor soils, and that's why you see things like uh, more stormwater basins than you might normally see on a site, larger basins. It's all driven by that balancing act. So the, the short answer is that we've had to answer t to that very high standard and prove out from an engineering standpoint that we are managing uh, <coughs> stormwater the best way. And the, and the town's cons uh, peer review engineer, Horsley Witten, has evaluated that, weighed in on it. We've made changes. It's been many, many months of that back and forth. And, and the recorded meetings really would give you that, that, that detail. I know. I, I get a little finger on it from another colleague of mine that's here. None of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. And I, I, I guess one of, the, one of the key points that I just wanted to make is that I feel that it's also incumbent upon the town to create a partnership um, with Toll Brothers. And we have created, I think, a great relationship with a number of the engineering companies that have worked with us on the seawall to try to really look at what this impact is. Every storm tells us something different. And I just want to see that that partnership continues as well. So I appreciate that. Yep. Could I just say that it's been carefully, very carefully looked at, as uh, was just stated, especially with the groundwater along Hazardly Road that has been considered in the drainage design extensively and they have added significant drainage improvements to correct that situation okay. and also that in addition to the special permit that's for the residential cluster district this is all there will also be the stormwater permit <coughs> issued simultaneously it'll be the special permit and stormwater permit and they have to find we, the town has to find that th they met the rate and volume, which I have stated that they 
our consulting engineer has stated that rate and volume is met for the whole site, including the 10 single family homes. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah. Joe Jacobucci, 29 and all of that. Um, the water mains, the dead end, the uh, yep. Yeah. What, what about uh, B and G? Is that, is that considered a dead end? Uh, I'm sorry? The water mains, the, the dead water end, where? You're talking about the uh, street F, I believe it is, up in the. <clears throat> You're just up in F. I think everything else is looped around, so there aren't any other B dead ends. Yeah. 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 Oh, this is B, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything's <laughs> else is looped. Yeah. Everything else is looped. So we're really only talking about that one sort of outlier on on road F over past. So yeah, going to be looped. Yeah. Yeah, the plans reflect that now. Yeah. Yeah, we've gone back and forth on that a little bit, but um, that's where we ended up. Yes. Looped. Um, any other questions? I just didn't get an answer to the parking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, where, where do you mean which park? Like at the community at center? At the top the of six inside. <coughs> and we park along where Kind of where Harris. that little road is right yeah. now, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. That's so a lot. That won't be available anymore. That won't be available anymore. <laughs> no. I don't have a gr I don't have a great answer on parking because we are talking about private property, a private condominium association, and then ten single family lots owned by somebody else at some point. Um, so it's something that I think maybe we could talk about um, when we get out there and talk about where you where your issues are and where you typically have to park and where is the right of way, meaning where do you have a right perhaps to park because you're on the town's road. And maybe we, in understanding your situation, maybe we can uh, disclose things to our buyers in a way where we set expectations up front. Uh, and I just don't know how that would shake out yet, but we can, Dave can sit down with you and, and talk it through. Okay. Yes. Um, Mark, 58 Kenneth Road. Um, my questions relate to the proximity to Wampatuck School, and I know this um, has somewhat been addressed in terms of the traffic patterns for the trucks, but I'm wondering, has the school committee or the superintendent weighed in on this discussion at all? Um, because it will impact the students. We, because I imagine comments. construction will be going We haven't on. received any comments from, I mean, we've requested input from everybody in town, but um, I guess they haven't felt like felt the need to interject any comments at this point. Um, I don't know where that, how that affects the discussion about the field, though. Yeah, at Wampatuck, I assume they've been involved in that conversation. Well, that's a board of selectmen conversation. Board of selectmen. So, I mean, that's you know. But I, I imagine the the board, the I, uh, school board's been involved. I would imagine, but that's a board of selectmen. Anyway, right. so. That's but a board of selectmen know. issue. Yeah. So you'll you'll have to probably take that up it's with it. It's just surprising to me. Yeah. Um, we. This has been a long process, and it's I a know. lot of information, and people are very busy, and it's been difficult at times to get input even from our own, you know, town departments and stuff. So uh, I have to say we haven't gone chasing the school department to say, hey, where are you? Um, but. Um, we've notified everybody, and they, they obviously are, are aware of the project, um, pretty sensitive to it, I would imagine, but nobody's provided any input to it. And as a follow-up question, what happens if the traffic of the trucks and the construction is impacting the school and the learning environment and recess and being out back there? I'm just... You know, I know I'm talking maybe two years down the line, but yeah. when phase two begins, because it's closed. <clears throat> well, I imagine you'll still be in contact with, with the town as we go through this. Um, you know, you can't can't build this site without having having the trucks and having the construction activity on site. So well, and we have a challenge. I think the notion of putting a fence up there is a good idea to sort of mm -hmm. make it not place where people go hang out or try to you know try to hang out in the construction zone <laughs> out there um, but beyond that I don't think we have anything identified there was there was a comment I think in one of one of the 
letters that came in about, you know, is there a possibility of having crossing guards um, stationed, you know, at the uh, at the construction entrance on, I think it was on Tilden, um, during the school hours, but uh, I don't know where, uh, did you have that conversation? We're, we're looking into um, some sort of a, uh, a push button type of crossing light where um, anybody who's walking across the entrance could push the button and it would um, blink so that anybody entering or exiting the site would see that flashing crosswalk type of sign. So we're looking into something like that. And, and I guess my other comment about school is that, you know, there are always trade-offs. We, just to, for those that don't fully understand it, we, we self-impose an age restriction on this community. The zoning does not require age restrictions. So we, from a high level, have chosen to um, not allow children in this community and therefore address the impact to the schools that we know is a major issue. Um, and we've also <laughs> been asked by the town to consider a ball field for the school. Um, so we're hoping that the positives outweigh the negatives. <clears throat> and also the, the construction trucks. Tilden is uh, restricted. Right. Yeah, so they, they won't be in front of the school. Right. They can't go all the way down. From right. The yeah. they, can't, they can only go as far as the access road. Right. right. Yes. Uh, Stu Petrowski, 119 Havilly Road. Just I was, as you guys were talking, where will the staging area be for the single family homes with the trucks and the contractors, et cetera, given, I guess they'll just kind of move along as they on the work? On, yeah. on, on the site, on, on each lot, on the private property. No, it'll be on the site on of the, the actual <coughs> uh, building. Okay. Because you're not, you're not going to bring, you're not going to build 10 houses at once, right? You're building them sort of as they're, as they're ordered or purchased, I would imagine. There's plenty of room on these lots for us to use, use the lots for staging. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, great. Um, I think we're, I'll, I'll actually open it up to the board members here too. Um, any, anything, Pat? Uh, not right now. Okay. Um, no, not this time. Richard? No, I can't think of anything. I think we went through most of the <clears throat> the bullet points that we were yeah, obviously we're, referring to. Yeah, we're just <laughs> down to the, to the you know final items here. I think where we would want to go, and we've already sort of started this, is the development of the findings of fact and and the permit conditions. Um, and I think that's kind of going to be our focus okay. going forward. Um, we do want to try to get to this decision, obviously before. We get to another May 10th. May 10th, right? Because that's when Richard's leaving, and and we have now, it will now be three people who have, who have filed a mullet on this, right? So we can't really afford to lose sure. anybody else. So if I, if I could speak to that for a moment, two things. And the meeting, which we'll continue to have, meetings with Karen is, Karen's done a super job with the draft finding of facts and whatever. A, a couple of things, though, as I said, we will. We're waiting for this meeting on, on Monday, which is we will have <coughs> substantially all of proposed conditions, which are, as you can understand, are rather voluminous, and uh, which we've crafted. Everything we'll submit will be things that, from our standpoint, I find obviously there's something. So in other words, I think we're going to fast forward on a lot of issues. One of the things, understanding that obviously it's subject to that, is uh, part of these we want to tweak and pull into the findings of fact. So I don't know from, if from a board standpoint, subject to knowing these are drafts, if we can, in other words, if, if Karen can coordinate with us and let us see these things, I want to make sure linguistically that the findings of fact is the town has understanding that they may be changed or whatever, that these conditions, in other words, I don't want to mix apples and oranges. I want to make them so like, I have a strong feeling that subject to the board's substantive issues, procedurally, these will be 90-odd percent dead on. And we'll have those, as I said, on Monday. So it isn't something that'll be drifting in two weeks from now. And so with, with that in mind, and as, as, as Steve, as you said, we're critically aware of the procedural conundrum we're in, and we're very, we're, we're very concerned about that, as the board is, is because through some act of God, a health issue or something, 
we could be out of the box after 11 months a year, and you know, virtually a constructive approval was what it would be. And so, uh, with that in mind, we'll, as far as we'll get all these things in at the next meeting, and I think Karen proposed on April 12th, Karen? April 12th. Right. Yeah. Is, would very much like to be in a position to go through, because right now, if there's any other information other than what we've discussed, we'd like to get the findings of fact, go through these conditions, and if at all possible, if we're in a position, if we're in consensus, they had to vote. Mm -hmm. And because I'm just, I'm just really concerned as, you know, obviously without getting into health issues, health issues always predominant for everyone, but in other words, it'd be a shame if after this great concerted effort of everyone that we ran into a procedural conundrum and we're very, very close. Mm -hmm. Well, well we're that, concerned as well. Yeah. Oh, no, I understand that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't mean, I don't mean to state the audience. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, and, but a lot you know, of people I, may not I, understand I think that. the, uh, you know, we don't, we don't object to providing you with, you know, the draft on right. um, these things, but um, we'll, we'll want to look at it first. Absolutely. And, um, and we'll work out a schedule, and I think Karen will have to manage the schedule on how, how we can release that information, right? Sure. But I think, obviously, the board will want to have a chance to look at it oh, first. Yeah. Maybe one of the suggestions I think you had last time was like, so we don't get into, um, uh, was it 90 and vinyl, or the development there where <clears throat> we kind of were amending the findings of facts and amending the conditions that right. night as we went through everything. Mm -hmm. So that they're all done beforehand and we have time to review them. We'll yeah. Absolutely, we'll commit whatever resources we need to get these rapidly and to respond rapidly. I understand that because it seems to me right now, after this meeting, 99% of any issues and information have been inputted, and it's a matter of having the decision and conditions reflect. So if we did the... Yeah, but I, I think what we want to do is get a stable version that we could then share with you. You could provide us, you know, a red line version of some kind. Yeah, we'll have comments. Yes, we'll do that right but away. But we want to get to that stable version. Um, right. right. Where we've done yeah. that so you will have... You will have from us, all our conditions, in other words, so we'll review this kind okay. of thing. Well, I think that, that makes sense. I think that's where we need to go. Um, I'm going to leave it to Ms. Just Joseph to, <clears throat> to manage that uh, right. sequencing and process here. And just to throw out a procedural question to Karen, if it ever got to a point where we were under a crunch, could we throw in another planning board meeting before uh, May 10th? Is that potentially we could possible if we had to, if we but had to I, I think that oh, no no I'm, just, I'm saying this only as backup plan b like uh, heaven forbid as you said well, you've gone through the, well <laughs> <laughs> no because here, here's the reality if for some reason steve bill and ian cannot make a meeting we cannot hold that meeting it's as simple as that Well, I'm just thinking of like Plan B. That's we're, all. We're all right. we're keeping on top of it every day, okay. so that you know we can make make the deadline. We know what the last possible date is, and we would like to try to get it done well before the last possible date. Right. The decision will be vetted through the town in the next month and with the applicant <coughs> after it's <coughs> vetted through the town. And just so you know, I'm coming back from Hong Kong early so I can be at that meeting on the, is it the 12th or 13th? 12th. 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 <laughs> I know. Yeah, well, what, I know it's a Thursday, so I think I'm coming back on Wednesday. Don't get, don't get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, the 12th. I'll bring an extra cup of coffee. Yeah. The international date line. You know? Yeah, the 12th here, not there. <laughs> exactly. There's no, uh, April 12th. Okay, um, I think we're at a point where we need to continue this. I think, is the continuance in there, folders? Yep. Who's going to read? Oh, I'm sorry. Also, I'm, I'm coming back early to make the May 10th one, too, from, from London. So I'm trying to, like, balance all this travel. Long before then. <laughs> <laughs> I move to accept the applicant's request to continue the public hearing for the residential cluster special permit for Seaside at Situate by Toll Massachusetts Land 3 Limited Partnership, CO Toll Brothers Incorporated off of Hatherley and Tilden Roads until April 12, 2018 at 7 p.m. in 
continue the time for action to file a decision with the town clerk until April 30th, 2018. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Stay dry. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, unbelievable. <coughs> and then we have to, so we, we have to sign one of these. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the one we can do though with the, the zoning we can do, right? The, I'm sorry, the English zoning we can do. I have to change the other one to reflect more what you actually wanted in it. But I guess, should we sign this tonight then? The, the, the Greenbush zoning one, or do you want us to wait? You don't have to. I mean, you can wait till next time, or you can sign it now. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Let's take care of any counties. Yep, we have a couple. I move to approve the requisition of $263.59 to W.B. Mason for file cabinet for $291.52 to Amory Engineers for stormwater inspections for 489 Country Way. I second that. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, we have, a we have a broken one and it jams every time, so. You know. Moving on up. Uh, minutes. Yep, we got a couple. Um, we got uh, two. Two, yeah. Um, move to approve the Situate Planning Board meeting minutes from uh, February 22nd, 2018 and October 26th, 2017. Ooh, October. <laughs> a second that. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. okay. Um, liaison report? Except for the water. Other meetings. Uh, we remain pretty busy, and you can see what I'm spending my life doing. So. Um, I talked to Brad um, about. He went to the. Unfortunately, I was wasn't able to go to the capital planning committee on the master plan. I guess they approved it, but, or um, they rec they're going to recommend it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he went, and Karen Canfield was there as well, supporting it. So hopefully that will, you know, get a good recommendation for mm -hmm. town meeting for the for the, you know, for the uh, request for the allocation for the money to do it. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, if that gets past the town meeting, then we'll be in a place we can start the master planning process. You know, updating the master plan. Concerning that, um, <clears throat> I think it was last, not the today's Mariner, but last week's Mariner, there was an article about sort of the master plan and like Greenbush zoning and like people mm -hmm. being kind of <clears throat> not a little bit against it or not on board. Mm -hmm. um, like, <clears throat> I guess it was also said in the paper on February 15th, there was a discussion about a building um, but I don't remember that being that's in the minutes. A CBA. That's a ZBA thing. And it said do, planning board, though. I think that was that, that was an error. That yeah, was that an was error. We do not have the ZBA has not filed their Section Six permit yet with the town clerk, and so obviously they can't come to uh, file with the planning board yet. Okay. Well, I read that and I thought, am I just missing it? Because because <laughs> it said planning board. So okay, that's good. Thank no, you. No, I mean we've um, we've well, sort of established that if. If the ZBA has approved something, then we want to see the approval before people come here right. asking for I guess, the site for approval. Uh, speaking of the whole planning issue, personally, I didn't like the tone of that article in the sense because it made it sound like the planning board wasn't listening to the people. Because it said the planning board, it actually in that article said the planning board did not want to hear about the zoning changes um, being done. And I thought, well, that's not right. I, I think there's some misinformation in that. Article. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so maybe that's my point: is how do we control that a little bit better? Well, I think the idea is to create a process that has a, that is fully engaging people in the comment process on the update of the master plan. It's not like we're just going to write a new plan and hand it out, right? Mm -hmm. There's there's a whole process there's involved. Whole process. There's public meetings and public input and and all of that. And that's why it costs so much money to do they're it. They're talking right? about two different things at the same time. Yeah. They're talking about, 
you know, you're going through, a, you're going to be going through a master plan process. There's also this Greenbush visioning from the EDC that's getting, that there's been one stakeholder meeting. There has been no, quote, broad public meeting yet. And so I think people are getting a little confused as to potentially what's going on. Yeah, I agree. Well, I think yeah. it, it is a little difficult because, you know, yes. that is kind of a, almost an outlier in terms of a planning process. Yes. I think our challenge is to wrap all of those efforts I, into a single master plan, right? Agreed. Um, yeah, agreed. Not only what they're doing, but what's going on with the water and sewer. And agreed. You know, all yeah. those yeah. things need to kind of be wrapped in. We don't need to recreate it. We just need to, needs sort to of wrap it in and, and <laughs> make, it, make it cohesive, right? Mm -hmm. And make it sort of, does this make sense as a strategic plan, right? There may be things in the visioning plan that ultimately as we get through it, we say that doesn't make sense, right? right. We should do something a little different. Um, but I think that's the mat that's the planning process, right? And, right? and it's gonna be like any plan that as soon as you print it, it's gonna be out of date, right? right. Um, but it's gonna have the, I think it'll have sort of the, the foundational components to it that sort of guide development and you know just the overall growth of the town for the next 20 years, right? I mean, you know, you read it now, they're talking about the coming on the train, right? So mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a little out of date right now. Um, and, you know, I think one of the interesting things would be looking at sort of what was projected and then saying how much of that really came true, right? right. How much of that is really happened versus, you know, the town went off in a different direction, right? For maybe very good reasons, but uh, it should inform the next iteration, in my view. But we do have to try to weave all these things together right. as a challenge. To, I don't want to reinvent the wheel either, yeah. right? So, no, there's been a lot of studies, a lot of planning, a lot of yeah. effort already spent. That, like you said, it just needs to kind of coalesce well, together. Some of it may not have been as well sort of um, publicized mm -hmm. to people who will be affected by it, and you know, these stakeholder meetings and stuff are probably part of that, right? Is to try to get input. Um, but I, they spent a lot of time with public input on those, on those visioning plans too, I think. And I remember there were two or three different Yeah, there was one, on there was one, um, I went to the visioning plan, I think for both North Situate and for Greenbush, but that was like five years ago or yeah. something. No, but I mean, even in this EDC process, I think there were some The EDC, open, yeah, had some, had an open house. Yeah, I know at the Maritime Center. Right? Yeah, at, yeah. The, at the Maritime Center. Oh, Maritime Center. Uh, um, they had an open house, they had yep. a Saturday session, and um, they intend to be having more um, as as things go along, but um, yeah. they've just had one stakeholder meeting yet. They haven't had one with, quote, the general general public right. about about any Greenbush visioning yet. Yeah, and I just see that as, you know, sort of the master plan can help facilitate all that. Right, sort agreed, of happening. agreed, right. yep. Um, and we ought to, the, the problem of creating a visioning plan like that in isolation is you're not wrapping it into everything else you're thinking about, right? Right. Um, so this is the opportunity to do this that. This is the opportunity yeah. to do that, yes. Well, I think what came out of that, Rich, was Mr. Montero and his neighbors feel that uh, they're going to be losing their homes in for business. You know, when I spoke to him, I told him that wasn't not going right. to happen. Well, I mean, he, he felt the residential area was yeah, going to be. Yeah, I think when they came, that's we didn't want to talk. I think that that was one of their fears was that mm -hmm. that's all being developed down there. So, we you know between the brewery and the, the housing on Union Street, so they were a little worried about what's going to happen at Fitz Mill. So right. I think they're worried that they're going to be a little driven out of their homes and not to worry about that. Right. That that is that's a well established neighborhood. And they're very concerned. Yeah, and it's, it's also zoned residential, yeah. right? It's not. No, it's not. not. No, it's that's not. That's, 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 that's the problem. problem. That's the problem. It's no, zoned it's not. business? Commercial. Commercial. Yes, it's zoned business. Business. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We've yeah, been doing a lot of research on that. Yeah. Which, and the village business overlay goes so, I mean, up to the brewery, That's one of those opportunities to really look at, you know, is there something you have to do in kind of a long-term plan to preserve certain neighborhoods, but yep. also allow the commercial development that you would also like to see happen in the Dreambush area, right? Right. So it may, re may require some rezoning, right? 
There's, I mean, but that's the master plan could could recommend that as well. Yeah. I mean, so, like you said, it all is going to integrate mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what happens with Fitz Mills be? It's, that'll be pretty interesting because that could have a big effect on that little neighborhood back mm -hmm. there. That could have a big effect. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have a but, but yet, you know, I think I think the brewery, you know, there's there's some parking issues and stuff, but it seems to have been very successful so far. You know. There's parking issues and um, traffic rules is heavily involved in them. And I mean, would you? What, how does the board want to handle that? Does the board want the um, the applicant to come back to you guys to talk to you about the parking issues? Um, do you want a report from traffic rules? What What does the board want? Well, it, to the extent that there is a problem I guess we need to understand the problem and whether there's a fix to it right um, right there the problem is um, sometimes emergency vehicles cannot get down the street because p people are parking on both sides mm -hmm. so there, there is a there is a distinct problem that a solution is trying to be worked out but as the permitting authority for the microbrewery how how involved would you um, well, it feels like the parking projections that were part of our approval didn't come right. to fruition. Huh? Well, I, I will so say maybe we need something updated to really understand kind of where the yeah. problem is. But I would say I would I would welcome the input of the traffic rules yeah. committee and right. and all of that. It it sounds like it's not something we can solve in isolation either, right? No, yeah. no, you can't well, solve and I think, in isolation. <clears throat> uh, yeah. From my perspective, the brewery has done a really good job. Uh, like I'm connected with them on Facebook. Every time they announce something, literally everything, every event they ever say or it'll come, come on down, mm -hmm. they always say parking at the Greenbush T station or the AVTA station. They said park near there, walk over is short. So they, they're advocating not to park in front of their place all the time. So yeah, but that's, that's sort of an unrealistic expectation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just I'm just trying to say they're trying to do something about it. I just wanted to acknowledge, no, no, I, I, acknowledge I that. No, I appreciate that. Right. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that's why you know why we have you know parking uh, requirements and zoning bylaws. Right. Is that um, it's easy to say go use an area that nobody's sure. there, but if it's a half a mile walk or something, sure. something they're not going to do it. <clears throat> yeah. Right? Again, and we're I mean, all we're all lazy. Yeah. But it isn't that far, relatively speaking. But do we're you, all lazy. Do you park over there? And walk I would in a second. Yeah. yeah. Do you though? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, a nice day. Yeah. I'll say yes. On a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I think that's right. And it, it, yeah. you know, we shouldn't. You know, we shouldn't. I, I don't think we should expect that. Um, you know, that creating a parking requirement like that will solve the actual problem because the problem's just sort of. The way motorists you know, tend to work, right? Well, the other thing is, um, you know, like what we did with the Inley School, you know, with all the signs along the road saying, you know, this is, you know, do not park here. I mean, it's because I mean, there's really only so much space on that brewery site. We're not going to add parking. Right. I don't that, believe. that was a little easier to manage because it was basically during drop off and yeah. pick up times, and they stationed the teacher, and you know, there there were specific things you could do. It seems like this is like all the time, right? over there so. I think it's mostly on Fridays and Saturdays you know when it's when it's busy yeah I don't know I, mean, I, I welcome the opportunity to sort of know more about it and, and know what kind of solutions people are thinking about okay. um, I don't know what you guys think but I feel like we you know we made we approved it as it is right so well to we, have a report from trying to yeah. if, if it's if there's a problem we should understand it so we don't we don't repeat the problem in, in some other project, right? But also solve the problem that that's already been created, right? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. at least attempted. Um, so I'd be I'd be more than welcome to have them come back and sort of help explain, you know, the issue. Uh, particularly if we could. Well, I guess Bill is on the traffic committee, right? Traffic rules committee. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Um, so I don't know if he's going to be at this. At any any meetings that they're going to have about this, have they already started discussing this? Yes, they have. They have. And do you know if they're what they're considering or what they might recommend? Um, no, I don't. Yeah. That information has not been shared with me. Uh, why don't we ask them if they can come back and sort of give us an update? 
kind of what the, what the problems they are that they're seeing and what they're considering as potential solutions. I'd like to know anyway. Yeah, and I think it would be good doing it in the public meeting setting because then maybe some of the neighborhood folks can come in there. Because they can actually tell us what the impacts exactly. are. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're the ones who are directly impacted. Right. Right. Yeah. The house. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm not looking to make it a witch hunt or anything, no. but, you know, just to understand it and then say, well, how are we, we going to get it solved? Yeah. Right? Um, and then I also don't want to repeat that problem again in some other permit. So it would be good to understand, you know, what, you know, what went wrong, so to speak. Uh, Everybody likes beer. That's how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else? <laughs> it's like you want to say something, but you don't want to say something. And then I will entertain. Well, Bill's not here, so we'll entertain well, Richard. Still <laughs> entertain okay. his motion, though. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.